Dear Editor-in-Chief, I know it's been a long time since I last wrote to you, but when you hear what I've been through to get where I am, you'll understand. It all started on the MS Epimeo, the cruise ship that was taking me to Shanghai. Magnificent cruise. Don't you think, Snowy? No, there's no way you can be hungry again. Stop it! Catch it! Stop what? Catch what? Are you all right, sir? The kiosk papyrus is blowing away. I'll catch it for you. Uh. Run, Snowy. If we lose sight of it, we'll never get it. Hey, watch out. Pardon me. Better slow down, kiddo. Ah, oh, come on, pal. I just mocked that. Turn, turn, yes! No! Hey, you! What do you think you're doing? Get out from there! You're gonna fall and break your neck! You hear me? Get down from there, I said! All right! Where is it? Where is it? There! Oh, no! Not again! Next time you finish mopping, pal! It. There you are. Careful, sir. Excuse me. Coming through. Ha! Huh. Jumping around like that. Hey, sorry. Goodness gracious. Oh, oh no! It's heading straight for the water! It went into that tube! <laughs> Hello? Has anyone seen it? I haven't seen it. There it is! Let's go, Snowy. We've got it now. Why is that boy running? Stop it! I think he stole the papyrus! Escape, thief! But I'm not a thief! I was trying to help that gentleman catch his papyrus. But he was running after you. We were both running after the papyrus. Ah, uh, that makes sense. I'm... Uh, sorry? You better be. That document seemed very important to the poor. Hello? He's disappeared! Uh, he snuck up to the top deck, followed by a little pooch. 
They were looking for some food. Oh, Snowy. How stubborn. Oh, 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 oh. I'm afraid that deck is restricted. Some cinema people booked it. It's just for them. That glutton dog. I have to stop him. Poor gentleman. Well, I guess I owe you. Come with me. Thank you. Oh, sometimes Snowy is like a stomach on legs, you know. Oh, don't tell anyone that I let you win. Where could they have gone? I'd better not disturb her. She seems quite focused on her reading. Good morning, sir. Did you see a little Prepare dog with... Prepare to die! Spiegel the evil weasel! <gasps> Who are you? Now I must start the scene from the top again. But you could have hurt me! You certainly deserve it. For interrupting my scene! My word, actors can be so vain. Why is it open? Did someone fall into the water? Arabian Nights, directed by Mel G. Ford. Arabian Nights, directed by Mel G. Ford. Hello, are you all right? Good morning, sir. Um, may I help you, sir? It looks like you could use the help a lot more than me. If that's your wish, sir, I'd be happy to let you help me, sir. All right, let me think. How can we get your head out from... If I may, sir, that might not be the kind of help I'm in urgent need of right now, sir. Would you be so kind as to order me to give you these glasses, sir? Yes, I can do that. And then be extremely careful not to lose the ring that lies at the bottom of one of the glasses, sir? Um, yes, I can do that too. And then order me to let you give them to the gentleman who gave me the ring and ordered the glasses, sir? Uh, close to the other stairs, sir? Yes, I can do all of that. Glad to be of service, sir. Uh, please, be quick. Uh, cinema people have a very short fuse, and I wouldn't like them to get me fired. My word, actors can be so vain. Oh. You just saved my life, young man. And now, on with my life's plot point. <sighs> my dear Matilda. Oh, breakfast. Mm. <laughs> my dear Matilda. 
there's something I've been meaning to tell uh, you for a long time. My dearest Marvin, at last. There's a moment mm. in your life that your heart, uh, my heart, our hearts. As we grow older, certain things no, are unhealthy for our hearts. My dearest Marvin, it was about time one of us said it. Oh. Oh, my dear Matilda. So, so you feel the same way. I... We're growing older. And this kind of breakfast is not healthy for the heart. Enough! <gasps> Thank you very much, my dearest Marvin. You're welcome. Sir, uh, may I presume that you delivered the glasses, sir? Indeed. Now, don't you think it's time we did something about your head? Uh, yes, sir. If that's your wish, uh, sir. So, I'm going to push and... Oh, no, sir. If I may suggest, you might not want to do that. I already tried, but the skin on my neck stuck to the metal bar and wouldn't budge. Maybe I could try to get something that makes the bar slippery enough. As you wish, sir. I am here to serve you, sir. <laughs> if only I had combed my hair with hair wax today, sir. That way, it would have been slippery enough to get me out of here, sir. This cruise ship is named after Mount Epimeo on the little island of Ischia in Italy. Maybe I could put one of them between the bars where the waiter's head is stuck, then inflate it so the bars bend. But no, they're iron bars. It would never work. My word. Can be so vain. Be careful. I'm waxing the floor, and it's slippery. Oh, thanks. It looks like a really tough chore. Are you kidding me? Waxing the floor is the best chore ever. And the lower you keep your head, the less likely people will come and whack it. That's my one and only motto. By the way, there's something I'd like to ask you. Can I borrow your can of wax for a friend? It'll just take a minute. Be generous to people who ask you for wax. That's my one and only motto.
Look. I got some floor wax. It should help your head slip out of the bars. Um, if that pleases you, sir, I'd be glad to let you do it, sir. Yes. All right. The bars are slippery, so... Time to push! It worked! Yes, yes, sir. I'm glad that makes you happy, sir. And now, if you'll allow me, sir, I've already devoted a great deal of time to your service, sir. So, have a good morning, sir. It's better not to step on the waxed floor. It's too slippery, as the waiter's head just showed. You there! Stop! Hey! You know him? You're the nitwit who knocked all the scripts on the ground! I'm afraid that's no reason to call me names, sir. You're afraid? Come here, and I'll give you a reason to be afraid. My fists are eager to meet you. Well, then I'm afraid I must decline your invitation. Let the Nedwit go, brother. We don't want to disturb the boss while he's reading a new script. Excuse me, sir. Is my dog... Snowy! I've been looking all over the ship for you. Have you no shame? Get out of there right now! I'm sorry, sir. His gluttony has no limit. Did my dog bother you? A dog? I don't know of any dog, young man. What are you doing there? Can't you see? I'm rowing! Oh, but your boat isn't in the water. That's right. You're very observant, young man. I tried to retrieve your papyrus, but it blew overboard. My papyrus in the sea? Impossible. I still have it with me. What you saw flying away was the prospectus of the travel agency. Odd. I distinctly heard you yelling the word papyrus. Have you visited the eye doctor recently? Just five minutes ago. He's the man with the silly moustache behind you. He actually volunteered to change my eye color for me. Don't you think that maybe you're a little... Oh, no. See what you have done? Me? You and your innumerable questions have made me forget why I was rowing. A shame, indeed. Uh, <clears throat> all the same. Questions are signs of an adventurous spirit, so I'll tell you a secret. A secret about something extremely secretive, of the utmost secrecy. So, this red mark on the map here is... The exact location of the Tomb of Kiosk! Oh, 
What is that curious symbol? I believe it must be the royal cipher of Kiosk. And I, Sophocles Sarcophagus, will be the first Egyptologist to reveal his tomb to the world. What do these hieroglyphs mean? They speak of the curse of Kiosk that afflicts anyone who tries to find his tomb. Actually, all the archaeologists who've endeavored to find it have disappeared under mysterious circumstances. If you're interested, why not join me in Port Said's old town tomorrow and we'll look for the tomb together? Certainly. We would like that. Right, Snowy? Mm -hmm. Until tomorrow then, dear friend. Goodbye, little man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh! oh. Uh, I beg your pardon, Captain. What an odd character. Hey! Huh? Clumsy oaf! Can't you look where you are going? Uh, I'm terribly sorry. I mistook you for a ventilator. Imbecile! Please, sir, control yourself. The gentleman didn't bump into you deliberately. You impudent little whippersnapper! How dare you meddle! Hey, you two! What do I pay you for? Hmm? <laughs> I'm afraid you're gonna be really sorry. Gentlemen, there's no need for this. <laughs> Someone could get hurt. <laughs> my oh, nose. Whoops, your nose. Whose nose? Whose nose? Whose nose again? Your nose. Not my nose. <laughs> I have Who's a shot up on a count of three. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> Bunch of bunglers! You call yourself bodyguards? Let's go! And you, you don't know who you're dealing with. The day will come when you'll regret ever having crossed my path. Remember my name. <laughs> How funny. He didn't even say his name. <sighs> His face rings a bell, though. Hmm. The next day, after a delicious breakfast, courtesy of a grateful and helpful waiter... All right, Snowy. We'll be arriving in Port Said in just a few hours. How do you want to spend time till... Mm. What? What's that? Does it smell odd? Can you find where the smell is coming from, Snowy? Fine, Snowy. That looks like ash from a huge cigar. That's the odd smell. Someone who smokes was in our room. But when? Can you find any more clues, Snowy? What's that, Snowy? for that footprint. Someone was here just a moment ago. Nice work, Snowy. I'll take it from here. Tintin and Snowy save the day. They took that picture at the official banquet the city of Chicago held in our honor, 
after we fought Al Capone. The blonde woman is Mary Pickford, the famous actress. And the man with the monocle... Wait, that's the bad-tempered man from yesterday. I knew I had met him before. Roberto Rastapopoulos, owner of Cosmos Pictures, the largest American cinema company. Mel G. Ford to direct Arabian Nights. Of course, that's the man I saw yesterday, sleeping on the top deck. My reporter camera is the single most valuable item in this cabin, which means that they didn't want to steal Snowy. There's some water on the plate. Maybe they tipped the jar over, water spilled onto the carpet, and then they tread on it, which would explain the footprint. Hmm. You're such a good detective, Snowy. I'm very proud of you. The sign is on the outside of the door, so it wasn't the room service who came in and smoked here. The drawers. I'd be appalled if someone had stolen my clothes. Still, no harm in looking. All right, they didn't take my clothes, as anticipated. I don't remember seeing this box before. How did this get... Huh? Is your name Tintin? Tintin? That is, is your, your name, name Snowy? Snowy? Yes, that's us. What... Well, well, well. The tip was true. That's opium, sure enough. What? This must be some kind of joke. I arrest you and your dog in the name of the law. To be precise, I name you to arrest your... Where's your dog? It escaped. We must tell the crew that a four-legged criminal is on the loose. Come with us, you two-legged felon. But this makes no sense whatsoever. Sense? Justice will put some... Oh. Who put that here? Surely the dog to stop us. The cunning crook. Let's offer a reward. <laughs> you! Where can we lock up this criminal? Oh, I know it. You can put him in the cellar. That way. What about his little pooch? Find it and you'll get a substantial reward. That sounds a lot. This scallywag tried to rob me. Find his dog for a substantial reward. Detectives, my husband has gone missing. He was thirsty. I looked in the bar, but... We don't have time for that, madam.
What if I, uh... Hmm... Substantial. That's stingy. But no, it would never work. Thanks. And do tell us if you see the four-legged criminal. Snowy is not Walk, a... Walk, you two-legged trickster. Why, he's such a cute dog. Why, why is it so hot in here? My vocal cords are going to dry up before this lousy piano gets tuned. Maybe you could open that window behind you, sir. <sighs> in the name of the fans of the great actor and the singer Randolfo Bertolino, <laughs> that's me. Grazie. Glad to be of service, sir. The soda, yes. Peanuts, yes. Da, 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 Spring water, da, no. Mm, no good. Ah. Hair wax, <laughs> yes, you never know. Ice cubes, All right. yes. Let's see. Napkins, yes. Tumblers? No. Still no good. Milk? Ah. Who orders milk? <laughs> Ouch! The piano <laughs> lid fell and... <laughs> Besides, this is no place for passengers. And your wife is looking for you. You know what? Edges dulled. Gotta keep things sharp. That's my one and a one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Ten. Oh, but now this one's edge is dulled. Gotta keep things sharp. That's my one and a one, two. Hey, Three. I'm so thirsty. Ugh. Empty. Mm -hmm. Ten. Oh, but now this one's edge is dulled. Gotta keep things sharp. Oh, That's not my a drop. one and a one, two, three. Hey, I'm so thirsty. Ten. <sighs> but then I guess it's in the lobby. Sailor? The one that opens the cellar is... Don't burden us with details. We're on a mission. Sir, uh, sorry, sir. 
And now I'm on a mission too. I will find that dog. Left, right. 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 That coward Tom and his rat excuses. Left, right. You've got to believe me. A ghost yelled through the ventilators. But it was me. I was chasing a... Shut up, you delinquent. And mind your step. If I could prove there are no rats, so Tom could come back. Ouch! That hurts. That's the cellar door, Thompson. Lock him in. Me? But the sailor gave you the keys, Thompson. To be precise, he gave you the cellar keys, Thompson. Look in your pockets. Not here. No. Hmm? Oh, look, the keys. They must have fallen when we fell. We were both right, as we always are. And now you, delinquent. Uh, but you must listen. Uh, in you go. Uh, now, which of these keys goes here? Another case sold, Thompson. Indeed. Genius as usual, Thompson. Now, let's wait till we arrive in Port Said and hand the criminal over to the authorities. You hear that, Snowy? We must get off of this ship. Let's start by checking all the possible ways out. Then, once we know all the possibilities, we'll choose the best option. I guess I can cast this way of escape aside. A toolbox? Let's see. Oh, a screwdriver. That's convenient. Hmm. Looks like a cargo elevator. Oh dear, the fuse is missing. Glad you found me.
crumbs. It must be blocked from the outside. Dash, it's too high. Crikey, it's too high. I could open up that duct, sneak in, and then... Oh. But what am I saying? I don't fit in there. But you could. Hmm, we could swim to that boat. Ah, but I can't open it with my bare hands. Oh, that's lucky. I could jump straight onto the boat. <laughs> if I find a way to open the porthole, that is. All right, so, among all my escape options, opening that porthole to jump onto the boat seems the best one. But I need more strength to open it. So how do I do it? I know. If I tie something from the porthole to the lift and send it down... Hmm, but for that I'll have to find a fuse. Let's get on with it. A toolbox? Let's see. Oh, a screwdriver. That's convenient. I must find a fuse to fix it. Go, old chum. Let's see what you can do. And keep a low profile. They're still looking for you, remember?
Done, Snowy. I knew you'd do it. Shh. Quiet. Now, go hide. In case they spot me and you need to rescue me again. So I'm here. And that's the maintenance room. That's where I'll find the fuse. But I must cross the post office to get there, which is... That door. the door leading to the laundry, where the maintenance room is. I can't get through that door unless I make that sailor go away. He seems so focused that I could probably sneak past him. Looks like an interphone. I can't tell if he works at the post office or not. Maybe I can make him turn around so I can see the symbol on his uniform. Hello, can I talk to someone at the post office? You are now. Want to talk to the mail guy? He's right here too. No, no, I just need you to go to wherever you're supposed to be working now. So, you don't even know where I work, and yet you're giving me orders? Stop joking, whoever you are, all right? Crumbs, it didn't work. You hear me? I hear him, but I'd better stay quiet now. Whatever. That's weird. The light stayed on even after I stopped pressing the button which must mean it stays lit if another speaker is pressing their interphone's button. Now this could be really useful. Scotch tape, what an invention. Hmm, I think I already know how to use this. But what if I use it like this?
Yes. Once I've fixed the lift, I'll tie the rope both to it and to the lever that I put on the porthole. Yes. Once I've fixed the lift, I'll tie the rope both to it and to the lever that I put on the porthole. to change my voice now. Attention, everyone. Please stay alert for an important announcement. I won't know if my plan is working till I see what's happening in the post office. Ha! He works at the laundry. And he's expecting an important announcement. I don't want to keep him waiting. Laundry room personnel, return to your workplace at once. I repeat, laundry room personnel, return to your workplace, or you'll be fired! It worked! He's gone! Now I have to be careful if I want to sneak past the other sailor. To be precise, name all stops by law. What a waste of time. There it is, the maintenance room. Why are we chasing a dog? It's ridiculous. A fuse. I'm so close now. One, two, three, and twenty. Okay, let's write it down. And Got it! Fifteen! Let's write it down. The drug dealer? Hmm. Why doesn't it work yet? Dash, the cables are a real mess.
I fixed it. Now's the time. Snowy, off we go. After the initial scare, the fishermen kindly agreed to take us to Port Said. The trip was calm, the sea looked like a lake, and I had nothing left to do but enjoy the sun and the sea breeze. Once at the port, I soon found Professor Sarcophagus and made arrangements for our trip to the desert, unaware that the police were once again on our trail. A couple of days later, somewhere near Cairo, the professor got off his mule and instructed the guide to wait for us till dusk. However, we would never return. It's at this very spot that we shall find the tomb of Kiosk. Oh. oh, what did I tell you? Here's the tomb! That's amazing! <gasps> oh, oh, noble Pharaoh, here I am! The name of Sophocles' sarcophagus will be remembered by future generations! <laughs> Cigar. A cigar here of all places. How odd. And it just gets stranger and stranger. The pharaoh symbol is on the band. I wonder what Professor Sarcophagus will make of it. <gasps> what in heaven's name? Sarcophagus! <laughs> it's as if he'd vanished into thin air. <gasps> Aha! Go on, Snowy, but be careful. What's that, Snowy? The professor's shoe. He has to be close. Professor? Can you hear me? Professor? It seems like the dangers the professor warned of are already here. Look at that! Well, everything looks quiet for now. I hope there's nothing else besides those loose pillars. I can't believe we're in an Egyptian tomb! Thank you. 
All right, this is a bit tricky. But the only way to get it right is to get it wrong first. I can move pieces up and down to save them for later. That sounded like the good kind of click. Look, the snake symbol has sunken into the door. Perhaps we can open the door if we do the same thing with the others. Ah, easy, Snowy. It's not even a real beetle. If the two walls are connected to the center column, maybe the column is connected to the exit door. One piece is clearly different from the rest. Thank <laughs> you. 
Look, the wave symbol has sunken into the door. Look, Snowy, the professor was right about the mysteries in these tombs. If the two walls are connected to the center column, maybe the column is connected to the exit door. Eureka! Just one more to go. We did it! Oh no, a new melody. Now we've got it! Well, what's a first without a second, and a second without a third?
professor would be so proud of us. Huh? Did the door just slam shut of its own accord? Look! The professor's other shoe. find a way to open it, or else we'll never find him. Don't you think, Snowy? <coughs> Snowy? <coughs> Snowy, where are you going? <coughs> Snowy, where are you going? Why are you running? This could all cave in at any moment! Be careful! You could get hurt! Maybe I should be careful too. And don't fall! We have no rope! I hope nothing happens to him. Come on, he's gonna be fine. He's the smartest dog in the world. Of course, that's it. Have you picked up the professor's scent? But then, why can't he hear me? Snowy, answer me! <laughs> Finally! Are you following the professor's scent, or...? Uh-oh! Is that rumble? No! Not again. Snowy, come here! Oh, crumbs! Snowy, be careful! It's full of traps around here! No, 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 no! Yes! Good thing he's too small to fall into them. Too bad I'm not. All these traps can only mean one thing. Just one thing. We're getting closer to the tomb of Kiosk, and probably also to the professor. But wait. The professor spoke of a curse. And no Egyptologists ever come back. Maybe. Maybe that's the curse of chaos. Run till you go mad. Snowy, stop! Come back here! Now! You're in danger! Listen to me! You've been hit by the curse of chaos! Snowy, 
Why did you run like that? A beetle? But you can't just... I mean, we're lucky to be alive. Don't worry. What's done is done. Now, let's find a way out of here. It looks like the place where builders, or embalmers, or whoever worked here took their breaks.
What? There's something on the other side. We've got to find a way to open this door. Too bad the professor barely taught me any of those hieroglyphs. Though these look like... smoking pipes? Maybe they have something to do with the cigar we found outside. And... Good heavens! These here ring a bell, don't they, Snowy?
you see that, Snowy? The light beam from the statue is shining through the hole in the door. See if it works. Let's be careful. Who knows what we'll find in there? I hope you're not still thinking about the beetle. Do you see that giant kiosk symbol on the ground surrounding the statue? I guess it must be some kind of door again. Speaking of which... Hmm, that's exactly what I thought. Oh, look! A white gem! Gosh, I think they told me about this when I learned to play chess. It's Senet, its ancient Egyptian cousin. There's nothing inside. Open it. Uh-oh. That sounded like the bad kind of click. There must be some trick to open it. Something bad's bound to happen. I can feel it.
I wonder what this scale is for. Am I supposed to put something on it? This reminds me of something the professor told us about. The weighing of the heart. Ancient Egyptians thought that, when you died, your heart was weighed against a feather. If they balanced, you were rendered worthy of paradise. Hmm. Maybe we should find a heart and a feather and put them on the statue's weighing scale. This one's empty. It looks like a crossing between rails, like the ones those other statues with the mirrors were mounted on. But... what are those two holes for? I can't seem to move it any farther in this direction. Why? sand pouring in. If we gave it enough time, it could fill the whole room. What kind of wood can last so many centuries? I'd say it only opens completely when something heavier than me stands on that exact spot on the ground. I could use the stick I took as a lever, but it's way too thick to fit between the lid and the arc. One cannot but wonder, how much does a grain of sand weigh? This helps me in the end. Oh no. That fallen stone is blocking the way, and it's too heavy to even think about moving it. Whoever made this statue in the shape of stairs 
I sure appreciate it. Ooh, I'm not going to fall. Don't worry. Move away, Snowy! <laughs> Dash! I thought it'd be heavy enough. Too heavy. Ever wondered how much a grain of sand weighs, Snowy? Just one million times less than one million grains. That's about how many grains are in here. Great! I hope it doesn't close now.
I know you were expecting a beetle. But look! Such an incredible piece of art. Isn't it? I hope I did it right. These amphorae are full of scrolls. One can only imagine how many secrets are kept inside. I wish I could remember the names of all the gods the professor told me about. What's happening, Snowy?
That's the worst kind of click I've ever heard. Run, Snowy! Snowy? That was a close call, wasn't it? I hope that's the good kind of rumble, if there's such a thing. Better step back. dark in here. Luckily, that beam of light shines all the way down to... Uh, our destination, I guess. If we've learned anything about ancient Egyptians, besides their love of self-closing doors, is that light beams point to the exit. Let's not go that way, Snowy. It's too dark. Now that's better. Remember Chicago? When I climbed from window to window on that building? Oh. This is much higher. A tunnel? Bad luck, it's too small. Snowy, can you... <laughs> Great. But be careful, will you? We're so lucky you're smaller than I am.
was starting to worry. Can you see if there's anything to help me get across? Hey, maybe we could use those planks as a bridge. But first, you must get up there. What are you trying to say? Oh, that was it. You never cease to impress me. Yes, old boy. You're amazing. Come on, let's keep moving. Makes that Chicago building seem like a piece of cake. <sighs> the professor's trousers? Poor man. He must be cold. Just bats. They always manage to scare me. Shh. Do you hear that? Don't even think about opening that. Uh-oh. Oh dear, again? Run! I 
wonder! Don't they ever run out of closing doors? ends there, right next to that pillar. Ah, huh, the Royal Cipher of Kiosk. If I know my ancient Egyptians, that's where we must direct the light beam. Rubble on the ground must be the top. I'm not sure that moving this broken pillar will actually help. See how the most polished side of the prism reflects the light, Snowy? The top is broken, so it can't reflect the beam.
top is broken, so it can't reflect the beam. Hmm. It looks just like those panels hanging above that reflect the light beam. It must have fallen. I hope this does the trick.
Whatever this is, looks like it isn't working. Maybe it's connected to the huge pillar somehow. I knew it!
kiosk pillar must have powered them. Let's see. Rumbling is good, didn't we? Oh, look! I figured. You figure? Well, I guess we figured. Mummy? G.H. Carnivale. Wait, where have I heard that name before? Hmm. Oh no! That's incredible! The professor was right about the curse of the pharaoh. These are all the archaeologists that desecrated the tomb of Kiosk. Oh, poor oh, souls. They pay dearly for their discovery. Hmm. I think that's what the professor called an ank. Why are these ones empty? Professor Sarcophagus! No way. It can't be! Snowy! We must get out of here at any cost. What is this doing among the coffins? What is this? Some kind of hook? Looking cigars. We're onto something, Snowy. I can feel it. Look, a trail of wax stains. Didn't they use it to preserve the mummies? They look recent, though.
Another ankh. A symbol of life, according to the professor. How strange. The wax trail seems to continue under this solid wall. Hmm, interesting. Looks like an altar for mummified animals. The pets of Pharaoh Kiosk, perhaps. Sometimes portray the dog god Anubis as a real dog and other times as a human with a dog head. Ah, oh, I can't open it. If only I had a lever or something like that. kind of shipping schedule with tides and timetables. The handwriting is pretty sloppy. The word Sereno keeps coming up. Hmm. Sereno. It has a leak, so that's where all that paraffin wax came from. took the head. Vandals. Identical to the one outside. And the boxes are full of the same cigars. Maybe the answer to this mystery lies in... What's going on, Snowy?
Snowy? Oh. I dreamt that this room was full of gas. You dreamt of the beetle? Forget it. It's not coming back. Snowy! Can you Please hear me? Plenty of unoccupied sarcophagi. We want the company of fresh blood. <laughs> <laughs> no thanks. The name of Sophocles sarcophagus will be remembered by future generations. Professor, is that you? Can you hear me? <laughs> Professor, where are you? I, Sophocles sarcophagus, will be the first Egyptologist to reveal this tomb to the world. Professor! And I will finally win the Egyptology World Award. This must be a bad dream, but it looks so real. Prepare to die, die a Spiegel, the evil weasel. You certainly deserve it. What? What's the film star doing here? You are evil as a weasel. Stop it! Catch it! Catch what? Did you lose your papyrus again, Professor? I lost my beard! What? Prepare to die, a Spiegel, the evil weasel. You certainly deserve it. What? What's the film star doing here? You are evil as a weasel! Catch what? Did you lose your papyrus again, Professor? I lost my beard! What? Why is that boy running? I think he stole somebody's beard. Why would I want to steal someone's beard? Then why are you running? Because... 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 This place is messing with my mind. You won't escape, thief! But I'm not a thief! I'm Tintin! And I'm a mummy! A mummy? I mean, I'm a sailor. A sailor? A sailor? I mean, I'm a... uh... Who was I? What's happening? Snowy! That's it! I'm chasing Snowy! Snowy, we have got to get out of here before we go completely insane! Get off of that beetle right now! Excuse me, I hope I'm not disturbing your eternal rest. Anubis? Snowy, I finally reached you! Gotcha! I'm not going to let myself be mummified. But what is happening to me? No, not that. Never. I can only imagine what happened while Snowy and I were unconscious. Must have carried us from the desert to the coast inside sarcophagi and boarded us onto a ship. Then I guess they threw us overboard, but I doubt it was part of the plan. Too much trouble to get rid of our bodies. But the day I find out who those crooks were, they'll be in trouble.
It was the end. But then... Snowy? Snowy! You're alive! But where... Where are we? A Bedouin tent? But we were about to be struck by a giant wave. And then... The captain of this ship rescued you, and I brought you to my tent. Tea? Who are you? I'm Sheikh Patrash Pasha, an admirer of your many adventures. Hmm. My many adventures? Of course. You're Tintin, the fearless reporter. And this is Snowy. He never left your side. I'm so honored to meet you. I bet you're having an exciting adventure. Please tell me. I love a good story above all. Well, I discovered the lost tomb of the ancient pharaoh Kiosk. And then, I kept finding these cigars with this funny symbol. A circle. With two dots. And a twisted line. You've seen it? On a crate. Sent. In a caravan. From the city of Abu Dhabi. Then I must go to Aberdeen. It's all the way through the desert. But I could give you a horse. But that's so... I mean, how could I ever pay you back? Hmm. What about... a memory of this happy encounter? Like a portrait of me with you and Snowy. A drawing for a horse? It's a deal. Hmm. But if I have to appear in the drawing, then I must find someone who can draw us all. Hi, friend. My name's Tintin. How would you like to take me to Aberdeen? Good horsey. Hello, sir. Are you perchance a painter? I need... Very pleased to meet you, good sir. I am Signor Oliveira de Figuera from Lisbon. Delighted. How come you... Please allow me to assist you, sir, should there be anything you need. Well, I... I can provide an unbeatable price for any item you should require. My prices will astonish you. A tiger repellent for brave jungle explorers saved many a life. What about cats? Oh, I'm sorry, I sold those out a few weeks ago. Ah, a unique object. A compass with reverse polarity. Reverse polarity? Yes, well, part of a discontinued series. It points south instead of north. That's why it's different from an average compass. A brand new sea journal. Its cover, made of oiled leather, will keep the pages dry. It's perfetto to keep a memory of your travels. That's a lovely journal, but I'm penniless. Oh, I'm always open to barter, good sir. A trade for any object of a similar value. I accept anything. Ah, oh, the heat in this place. My kingdom for some refreshment. The art of escapism. All known methods explained. That's a trumpet to communicate with elephants. Manufactured in India. A pair of tinted spectacles to avoid hypnotical possession.
smells like luncheon. Is it some fish soup? It will be ready when it's ready. Go somewhere else. Must be the cook's pet. They usually have one to hunt down rats. Well, hello, young Sinbad. Slept well? Yes. Thanks for rescuing me, Captain. Don't mention it. Now, what can I do for you? I'm looking for someone who can draw. Well, I am a bit of an artist myself. To pass time at sea, I draw some fine charcoal pictures. Could you do one now? I'll need some paper and a pencil. I lost mine in a storm a few days ago. So, what's our heading? South by southeast. We'll make a stop tomorrow on the Arabian coast. We'll get some water and continue our trip to Yemen. Ready to have my rematch, boyo? I'm gonna show you who's the champ. Keep dreaming, you big dumb lummox. Oh, last. Here they go again, eh? If only they would lose that stupid coconut for good. An unattended kitchen is a recipe for disaster. Hello there. I'm playing, you punk. Oops. Sorry. Aim better, you idiot. It's our last coconut. It's the boy's fault, not mine. You'd better not disturb us again, you little busybody. Oliveira could need a good parasol. That umbrella... Please, have a look. What's that game they're playing? They've been doing that for weeks and I still have no idea. I just know that it could take them hours, and if I interfere, it could be mutiny. Boredom turns some men at sea into villains, and others into real dimwits. Here's hope that they'll lose that stupid coconut once and for all. So, you are a sailor and an artist? Indeed, I was going to be a painter, but I yearned for a life of adventure. I had lots of wonderful sketches in my sea journal, but I'd lost them along with my charcoal pencils. That's the life at sea. Expect the unexpected. What do you transport? Are you a reporter or a customs agent? I'm just curious, that's all. Well, we carry umbrellas, amongst some other rare commodities. And we used to carry coconuts, until some idiots started playing with them. Do you know a ship called Sereno? Well, the Red Sea is full of vessels. Can't know them all. Why do you ask? I saw the name somewhere, that's all. Let's hope Snowy never sees him. Hot coals unattended over a wooden deck. What could possibly go wrong? A scupper. It helps to flush out the water that falls inside the ship. It's blocked with some old canvas. I think I'm never going to understand this game.
Ahoy, helmsman! What's our heading? South by southeast. Steady as she goes. Straight on until we spot land. Let's hope he doesn't smell the cook's cat scent. Noble Sheikh? Yes, my friend. The city of Aberdeen. What's it like? It used to be a wonderful place. Now it's under the control of evil Colonel Fuad. He rebelled against our Emir and attacks my people. May his name be cursed. But soon, I'll reunite my men, ride back to Abudin, and put an end to his tyranny. So you want a keepsake of our meeting in exchange for the horse? Exactly, my friend. A picture to remember this wonderful event. Though I also could give you the horse in exchange for Brave Snowy. Out of the question. He goes where I go. I had to try. But I expected nothing else from you. What happened to the cigars you intercepted? We were ambushed by Abu Din's troops almost immediately. We had to run and leave them behind. What are you reading? Some of your latest adventures. By the Jinn, they are a blast. So glad that you enjoy them. Brave Snowy. Always searching for bones. He's my favorite character. But I'm surprised to discover he doesn't talk. Well, sometimes I feel that he's about to say something. Why do you travel by ship? I thought your people preferred the desert. It's a clever route, you see. The enemy would never expect me to sail the sea. Only a small retinue travels with me. Half a dozen servants, just the bare minimum. We will only join the bulk of my troops near Abu Din the night before we attack. I guess. That's a nice blue-eyed horse you've got down there. Alter. It belonged to one of my men, but he's on mission in Abu Din. In exchange for the picture, you could be his new rider. I've just realized that I have a camera. Wouldn't you prefer a photo to a drawing? Hmm. Could I have the photo the very moment you take it? No, it would take a few days, and equipment that I don't have right here. Thanks, but no. I prefer a nice drawing, just like the ones from your adventures. No more tea. I hope you aren't thirsty now. Don't worry, my friend. My men will prepare another kettle later. I heard you lost your rider, my good old Tear. I'm sure he's safe and sound. That's the spirit. The splash of a wave could cool down these coals. What if we changed our course? Thank you, young man, but I'm not into tea. That umbrella could do a better job than being a golf club. Here, drink this. It will refresh you. Obrigadissimo, my good sir. I offer you an article of your whim in exchange? Great. I'd love to have the sea journal, if you'd be so kind. Mm, I'm afraid the tea is not that valuable. Choose again? Well, I've got no use for any other of your articles but the sea journal. That can't be. Not even the compass with reverse polarity? All right. Well, everything is useful in good time. 
Just remember I owe you one article, free of charge, whenever you need it. Can I get the broken compass in exchange for the tea I gave you? Of course. You mean the reverse polarity compass? A fully functional alternative pointing device. And a Portuguese makes a deal. It's a deal. Oliveira could need a good parasol. That umbrella... That umbrella could do a better job than being a golf club. He doesn't need a broken compass. What do you think about this compass? Looks like a nice piece of... Well, I'll be... What's wrong? According to this, we've been off course all this time! Whoa. Uh, uh. should be that thing is broken well it's got reverse polarity that's what I was trying to tell you I'm sorry why you little prankster luckily we'll be back on course soon. but don't you try to do anything like this again you hear me He's a chic shake with good literary taste. Hmm. I think I know who needs this. Here, now he might have some shade. Hmm, it's a fine piece. Oak handle, huh? British craftsmanship. Very valuable indeed. Ah. Oh, what a shrewd negotiator you are. Have you ever thought of working as a salesman? That's kind, but I'm happy working as a reporter. <laughs> Please choose any item of equal value in exchange. I'll take the Sea Journal, then. Yours it is. Pleasure doing business with you. new sea journal. Oh, and a fine piece it is. You bartered it from Oliveira? Cunning lad. How lucky. The soup extinguished the coals before they could start a fire. It's going to take him a long time to get the cat out. An old salt, but he's got a sense of humor. He's a chic shake with good literary taste. I have a feeling that he doesn't need this chunk of coal.
Could you use this to draw? Well, it's not my old pencil, but it will do. Right! Here we go, young man. Time to make some art. Keep still now. I need to capture the image. Can it be a funny picture? After all, Tintin's adventures are funny. <laughs> I'll try my best. Now then, you two hold still, please. Ah, you truly earned that horse. Thrice blessed be the day of our meeting! <laughs> the Sheikh was so happy that he even gave me a bag full of money. Then, Senor Oliveira da Figuera helped me select the finest and most essential of his goods. It was a pity that I had to leave all of it on the ship, but at least I made the crew happy. The next morning, as the ship approached the Arabian coast, I said goodbye to the captain and hoped to see him again. Hmm, maybe I shouldn't have hoped for that. We trekked into the desert, completely unaware of what was in store for us. Huh? What's... Dear me, those people need help. Let's go, Altair. Full speed ahead. to fear from those brutes. Cut! Oh! Huh? Imbecile! Drayton! Super idiot! Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't know that... We'll have to reshoot the whole thing now! No! You ruined my entrance! It's a Randolph or Bertolino fan. So clingy. Security! Who is the pea brain who stopped the. <gasps> you! Mr. Rastopopoulos? I'm really sorry. We are even. I owe you an apology for what happened on the cruise ship. Come. Let's talk in my tent. And the rest of you, get back to work! Make the most of it, my reporter friend. I almost never do interviews. You've built a truly incredible set. It looks like a real city. An exact replica of the streets of Abu Din. We spared no expense. Abu Din? We were going to shoot there, but they're at war with uh, desert bandits, I think. We met before the cruise, when I exposed the Chicago mob at the cellar. The mob? I've never been anywhere with the mob. Oh, uh, sorry. I meant the celebration banquet. Oh, banquet, right. You know, I go to so many events. You're shooting a real mega production. An epic super scope blockbuster production. Standard for Cosmos Pictures. And you've come to Arabia to shoot it? I've got business in Kemed. Only the amateurs shoot in Hollywood. What kind of films does Cosmos Pictures shoot? Only the best, of course. The Adventures of Brave Dave. The character played by the golden boy, Randolfo Bertolino. 
This one here will be the fifth movie, and we're planning on six more. What happens in the adventures of Brave Dave? Adventures. Adventures in Alaska. Adventures in Russia. Adventures in the Wild West, in the jungle, in Arabia. What's the story of his adventure in Russia? He battles evil Cossacks, but in the end, he wins and gets the girl. What happens on his adventure in Alaska? He has to fight evil Eskimos, but in the end, he wins and gets the girl. And what happens here in Arabia? He comes face to face with evil Bedouins. But in the end, he wins and gets the girl. What happens on his adventure in the jungle? Oh, this one is the most experimental one, you know. Dave meets the girl at the beginning, but she gets kidnapped by evil cannib- Evil cannibals? He wins and gets the girl? Impressive. Are you sure you're not a screenwriter? What kind of adventures does he have in the Wild West? He clashes with Indians, evil Indians, but in the end, he wins and gets the girl. The adventures of Brave Dave are a little... repetitive? The winning formula! And you're sure the audience won't get tired of that? You know a lot about the reporting, but ah, movies are another story. Do you remember Professor Sarcophagus? You mean that imp... Uh, uh, the passenger who bumped into me on the cruise ship? <laughs> he disappeared in Egypt and... I'm worried. Stop worrying. That guy knows where he is. Wherever he is. Thank you for your hospitality, but... What? Leaving us so soon? I have to get to Aberdeen. But you haven't told me how you got here yet. Well, it's rather hard to believe, but, uh... It all started the day after we met on the cruise ship. And so you see, that's how I ended up on your film set. What a story! Are the film rights for sale? We're not sure how it ends yet. Too many loose ends. I was lucky that merchant ship found me. Hmm, strange crew, and it didn't make a port call. What are you suggesting? Call me suspicious, but, uh, did you go down to the ship's hold? No, but they told me they were transporting umbrellas. Umbrellas in the desert? Hmm, curious to say the least. What were those cigar boxes doing in a thousand-year-old tomb? Maybe mummies have a taste for good tobacco. But what if they weren't ordinary cigarettes? Maybe they're hiding a secret. Or maybe you were hallucinating. <laughs> Pharaoh cigars. <laughs> Absurd. Could you show me how to get to Aberdeen? If only. I fired the local guide, and no one on the set is from the area. But didn't the boat captain give you a map? Maybe you could go ask him for one. You know what? I'll take your advice. That's the spirit. But be careful, and don't trust anyone. We rode back to the ship to ask the captain for a map to Abu Din. But there was nobody on board, except for the cook's cat. And... Well, once again, Snowy couldn't help being Snowy. But thanks to him, I discovered a terrible truth down in the hold. Snowy, come back here. Snowy! Where are you? Always chasing cats. Coconuts? But the captain said he'd run out. He lied. So maybe Mr. Rostopopoulos' suspicions were warranted. 
Let's take a look at the rest of these crates. Locked. Snowy, are you in there, old chap? No, he sounds too far away. said they were transporting umbrellas and, well, these are definitely not umbrellas. Great snakes! Just one spark and we'd be blown to smithereens. My word, it's like an arsenal. suspected that this peaceful looking vessel was involved in arms smuggling interested in some ow my head why am i why indeed but i ask the questions here so tell me why are you back on my ship I... I came looking for a map of the desert. Well, bad timing, my young friend. You should have asked elsewhere. Let's say I believe you, which I don't. What were you doing here, snooping around my hold? Snowy ran below deck before I could catch him. Where is he? If you've touched a single hair on his head, Believe me, soon your dog will be the least of your worries. Perhaps now you'll tell me. Why is there a Coast Guard ship heading straight for us? What? I swear I have nothing to do with that. If I hadn't caught you spying in my hold, I might actually believe you. I was planning on leaving you here while we escaped. But... You've got guts, kid, and I can appreciate that. Join my crew as a cabin boy and I'll untie you. What do you say? I could trick him into believing I'm going to join his crew, but if he calls my bluff, things could get worse. Sure, why not? Untie me and I'll lend you a hand. <laughs> nice try, but you're a terrible liar. All that honor won't get you very far, as you're about to see. If it was you who gave me away, you should know that this boat is mine. And I rather blew her sky high than surrender. We're all set to go, Captain. Good. I'll tell the others to ready the boat. You prepare the TNT. Aye, aye. Wait a minute. Uh, why me? Because... I ordered you to. Now, go like the fuses and be quick about it. Aye, aye, sir. All right, all right. He said, like the fuse and be quick about it, right? Obviously. So, I like the fuse. And now, be quick about it. Oh my! Snowy, put out the fuse or we'll blow up! Hurry! Run, Snowy! Go get the dynamite! Bravo, Snowy. Now quick, set me free. Thank you. 
needs a strong sailor's knot and a thick rope. Quick, find something sharp to cut me loose. Quick, fetch something sharp. Boy, time to cut the rope off. Ah, brilliant. Now let's find what we've been looking for a map to Aberdeen. Bingo, we'll escape through the bilge. But I'll have to move those crates to open the hatch. <laughs> Sounds like we've been boarded. Probably the Coast Guards the captain mentioned. They're not going to believe my story if they find us, so... You better... Not now! Not again! <laughs> Snowy, where are you? Come back here! Our anonymous informant said that Tintin was traveling on a ship like this one. Let's keep our eyes open. Tintin's dog, you nincompoop. Then the master can't be far. Quick, the lanterns. By the name of Thompson, he won't get far. To be precise, we won't get far by the name of Thompson. This must lead to the captain's quarters. Dash! We were so close to finding... At least one of us got in. Though, knowing Snowy, I'll have to wait for him to catch the cat first. Snowy! Forget about the cat and find a way to open the hatch. Come on! I have a feeling he's not in the mood. Snowy. So this is definitely the captain's quarters. The noise came from that door over there. They'll never open it from the outside, but let's not test our luck. Let's find that map and get out of here. Open. 
open the door in the name of the law. In the name of the law, open that door. We got it, Snowy. Our route to Aberdeen. Now we just have to get back to the coast and... Huh? Time to test my aim. Eureka! Now keep your hands up. As you wish. But quick! I've got him! Down! Oh, that's my nose, you clut! I'm so sorry. Down! So. I tied the wires. Then moved the hands. And. I done it. Now, back to the beach with everyone else. Light the fuse, the captain said. Well, he never mentioned four barrels with a timer. Great snakes, I have to defuse those explosives. Stop! We arrest you in the name of... Blimey! Wait, no, listen, I can... You ex thought you could blow up the ship while we were knocked out. Oh, oh in, the in the name of, of the law! <sighs> I can't leave without defusing the barrels. I have to prove I'm innocent. Another one's defused. Two more left. You're surrounded! There's no way out! To be precise, you're out and we can't surround you. Just one barrel left now. Bingo! All barrels are now defused. There he is! Don't let him get away! With the map in our pockets, we rode back to the inlet. As one should be grateful, we paid a small visit to Mr. Rustopopolis before setting off for Aberdeen. But then, for some reason, the Thompsons found our trail again. Yet that was not the worst of our problems. The sun was unforgiving, and our canteen soon ran out. What? Look there, Snowy. Water. And shade! Crumbs. It was just a mirage. Oh, my poor Snowy. We triumphed too soon. However, our little detour saved us from the Thompsons, who mistook me for a sheikh who was peacefully resting on a dune. A tiny incident with huge consequences. After crossing the burning sands, we finally found a real oasis and arrived at our destination, the city of Aberdeen. Not a film set, but the real thing. We soon found their military command and devised a plan. Snowy would bark at the guard to get his attention. Then I would sneak through the door, steal a uniform to blend in, and look for clues of... A horse! What a generous gift to our cause. Hustler! Sorry, sir, but it's not... Get the not... stables! Now! Thrice blessed be this day. Quiet, quiet, Hunt! Nameless horse. Hmm. And now, dear benefactor, will you please join our cause as a soldier? But I'm not a... Hmm. All right, sir. 
my name is... You lazy words! Keep your distance from the other newbie! Stay in line! What? It's lucky that Snowy is saying goodbye to Altair. He hates being shouted at. Salute, recruit! Yes, Corporal. Well said, recruit. Now you belong to Aberdeen's infantry. Get your uniform and boots. Salute, recruit! Yes, Corporal. Well said, recruit. Now you belong to Aberdeen's infantry. Get your uniform and boots. Crumbs. I'd rather join the Air Force. Are you sure you want to take that uniform, recruit? Wear that uniform with honor, recruit! Take good care of those boots, recruit. They'll take Permission you Permission to leave, Corporal! Permission granted, recruit! Permission to leave, Corporal. Permission granted, recruit. Lacey Wom, Corporal. Ha! I knew you weren't from these parts. Follow your mate to the bunkhouse, Lacey Wom. All right. Let's go to this bunkhouse and talk to people. Hmm. Maybe I can get them to blurt Your some bed information out. Your the second one on that wall. Yours is the one behind oh, me. A bed, finally. Thanks. My name Change is... Change your clothes and wait. Two Western spies, identical but not twins, were spotted yesterday inside our city walls. They both display bushy moustaches, walking canes, and a tendency to bump into things. Anyone who provides information useful to their capture will be generously rewarded. That's your bed. Sorry to hear that. Is it broken? The window is broken. And the civilians on that street. Partying all night long. <laughs> oh, my. By the way, my name Can't is... Can't hear you speaking. My earplugs are stuck in. I'm going to need some extra blankets, but at least it looks like a lively neighborhood. Nine thirty two shop get dressed. Nine forty three shop instruction starts. Nine forty seven shop instruction ends. Ten twelve shop clean privy. Ten forty three. Hello, my name is. Don't waste my time. It's precious. But where can it be? Hello, my name is... If you see a sock, uh, white, only two holes, a shape of a sock, uh, tell me, will you? Um, yes, sure. Hello, my name is... Your name is Soldier, Soldier. And my name is Soldier 2, Soldier! Shh, shh, don't cry. We will like it in here. Hello, uh -huh. my name is... Oh. This never happened. With you, new recruits! Go there! Instruction time! Yes, sir! You, with the quiff! Turn left My on name that is... corner! Hurry up! Come here and take your pla- Oh! Right, you lazy worms! Go, go, go! The first among you two to finish will be rewarded. The second one, ha! I got a special treat for him. And the same goes for you two. Three. 
Good luck. Hey! Go! Go, 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 go! some grenade throwing. Go, go, go! But these are rocks. Shut up and take cover, lazy one. One. Two. Two. Three. Three. Four. Four. Five. Not bad, lazy one. See if you hold on when real grenades arrive tonight. Now back to the obstacle race. Go, go, go! Go! Go, 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 go! All through. The new spotlights have arrived. About time. Raise them up to the gate tower! You're almost finished! Go, go, go! Whoever waves the cloth on top of one of those poles will get the reward! As for the other one of you... Ha! Now try! Go, go, go! Saved him. Huh? If you ever what? need anything, my house is the tiny blue one near the main bazaar. Oh, yeah? <laughs> you just destroyed military property. We didn't do. But he just four days fatigues and tidy this mess up now. A man's writing, and then all of a sudden... No, oh, I need to flog someone. Snowy? I need you to stay here. Watch out in case someone approaches. If things go south, don't play the hero. Hide and wait for a chance to rescue me. <laughs> Fuad's office. The best place to start looking for the cigars. I better hurry. He could be back at any time. It shows all of Aberdeen's defenses. Looks like they're preparing for a siege. 
It says here that desert tribes are gathering for a final strike against Abudin. They've cut all the supply routes and grow stronger by the day. No wonder the Colonel doesn't seem so happy. Hail Grandmaster. I recovered the stash of cigars stolen by those meddling Bedouins. They'll be safe in my office. Mum's the word. Mum's the word? Strange choice of words, I'd say. Once I finish with the rebel tribes, I'll reunite with you in our jungle hideout. There we'll... He stopped writing there. A hideout? Where? I must find it and have a look at those cigars. They're in this room. I can feel it. What kind of man keeps a diagram of a grenade as decoration? According to this, Aberdeen is out of bullets, grenades, and cannonballs, but they're being delivered an insane amount just today. Golly, is that Fuad's mother? What if mum's not the word, but the key? In that case, could his secret stash be here? Got it! For what secret stash? Hmm, but how can I open it? The clues to open the safe must be in this room. All locked up. I bet Fouad has the key. A map? It's too high, though. Those spearheads look really old. And sharp, too. This may have some use, apart from sweeping, I mean. A broken riding crop. Odd thing to find in a paper bin. What an awful decoration. It's got an iron lock, and I bet Fouad has the key. Crumbs. If only the broom had some sort of hook or a curved handle like umbrellas do. Just imagine one of them on the end of a long stick. Wait! All right, let's see now. Aha! There you are. The red string seems to follow a route of some kind. It points to a location in India, a spot near Shimla. That's where we are right now, the city of Abudin. 
Didn't we find the Tomb of Kiosk near there? The letter mentioned a jungle hideout. No jungles in Arabia or Egypt, but India. Yes. That will be our next stop. This area around here. The red string seems to follow a route of some kind. Bingo! Now let's see, what's all the mystery behind these notorious cigars? One, two, 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 one, two,
five minutes before my turn at the cemetery. Though, five minutes early, five minutes late, who cares? What? That sleazy smuggler has swindled us! He sent us coconuts instead of grenades! Oh, I absolutely love coconuts! You also love losing the war, you lazy worm! No, of course not. Ah, here are the Colonel's whips. What does he want that many whips for? You top a lot for a private. Get back to your rags! Getting past here without being seen won't be easy. But if I make it to the cemetery, I might have a chance. That recruit could have made it far. Too bad he turned out to be a traitor. Yeah, it's a pity. But the other new recruit is even better. Do you mean me, Corporal? <laughs> Keep dreaming. Is it true that Sheikh... Huh? They say that coward sends his troops to do the dirty work while he lounges in his tent. How many wars has the Colonel been in? More than I can count on two hands. Really? in there now. Can I get that soldier out of there? First thing I should do is turn the radio on. The first thing I should do is turn the radio on.
first thing I should do is turn the radio on. Perhaps I should match the green wave frequency with the white one. It's a miracle that it still works after that fall. Fuad's never gonna fix it. There's a window in the bunkhouse that's been broken for months. Hey, don't you dare criticize the Colonel. I have to find a way to get those guards out of there. Don't move, traitor! I hope this gets them out of there. Darn spotlight! Are you okay? Yes. At least it stopped blinking. Let's check it out. Finally, be getting out of here. Dash, it's locked. Tintin, we have good news and bad news. The good news is that we've managed to beat you at the main gate. The bad news is we have no key for the locked main gate. Crumbs. Let me think. Bingo. Walk to your left. Then turn right and wait for me outside a half-opened window. I know where I can get out.
Hey, the corporal asked me to get some barrels out of the warehouse. Can you give me a hand? Of course. My shift ends in two minutes and seven seconds, during which time I'll clean the tables. And when I finish that, I'll have seven minutes free to help you. Crikey, it's locked. Because I have to be brushing my teeth at 4.57 to be in bed by five o'clock. Okay. Nutter. Uh... All right, I've got two minutes and seven seconds to get out of here. Crumbs. How many guarded doors am I going to come across? The keys. Hmm, I need something to help me reach them. Once again, a broom crosses my path. Crumbs. How many guarded doors am I going to come across? The bunkhouse. That's it. Don't turn around. I've got them! Huh? I'm sure I left my keys here. Hey, Hamed. You didn't take my keys, did you? No, I haven't seen him. Help me find them. I can't waste a second of time uselessly. Yeah, sure, but when I ask you for help... My time is precious. Never ask for more than I can give you. All right. Close that door. Can nobody close it? I'll get it. I'll get it. Oh, where's my teddy bear? Where is he? There you are, Fluffy. Close. Broken window. I need to open it when the guard isn't looking. Why do socks love getting lost? Where did you hide, little sock? Beloved sock, where are you? Are you there, little sock? My footsie woodsie is looking for you. Free at last. Oh, Snowy! I've missed you so much. I'm so glad you're alive. Thompson and Thompson, I'll... we'll talk later. Follow me. should be safe here. Thank you for helping us. But... But why are you helping me? We only just met. You rode into Aberdeen, on my beloved Altair's back. I'm Nadim Hafiz, brave Bedouin spy, faithful servant of Pashash Pasha, son of sand, heart of camel, oasis of desert, and sworn enemy of Colonel Fuad. If the Sheikh entrusted my beloved Altair to you, then you are one of us. 
How did you find Snowy? Where was he? Altair found him, wandering around, sad as the waning moon. I remembered that he was your beloved dog, and when I saw him alone, I knew you were in danger. How do you know Thompson and Thompson? I was in the city center when I saw those two idiots. They were walking around dressed as Jellababi Bedouins, like it was no big deal. Here in Abu Din, where we Bedouin are public enemy number one. How can I escape from Abu Din? Tomorrow, when it gets dark, I will take you to the city gates. Be careful not to get near the airfield. It is always guarded. Will the Sheikh and his allies win the war? No doubt he will. Patrash Pasha, son of sand, heart of camel, oasis of desert, will defeat the dictator. Generations and generations of warrior blood run through his veins. How long have you been undercover? Longer than I'd have liked. But I would live a lifetime here to serve Patrash Pasha. Son of sand, heart of camel, oasis of desert. Before we speak further, are we sure that we haven't been followed? You're right. I'm going to watch out the window. Thompson and Thompson! Oh, thanks so much- We arrest you in the name of the law! What? But why? Because you're wanted for drug trafficking and gun running. And that is why we braved a thousand dangers to snatch you from death. This is a misunderstanding. Believe me. The misunderstanding is that you are not yet in prison. To be precise, misunderstanding is an understanding that has gained a miss. Colonel Fouad is the actual criminal. He's at war. It makes sense that you don't trust him. He's totally corrupt. He's only interested in getting rich. We are not here to solve this territory's internal conflicts. Listen to this. I found cigars in Colonel Fouad's office. Ooh, that is a problem. Yes, so now you see? Yes, his health will go to the dogs. You're under arrest. They found us out. Crikey. It can't be. Just where we had it. You go on the roof. Hurry. Open the door. And you? I'd never forgive myself if I left Altair here. Go on. Don't get caught. Go. Oh, I've escaped. Find them. You won't escape, Lacey Wom. Now how are we going to get out of this? Find them, Lazy Worm! Don't let them get away! Yes, yes Corporal! Don't leave even an alley on guarding! The whole army is looking for us! Excuse me! Ow! That hurt! Block all the exits! <laughs> what are you doing climbing a palm tree? Do you think he's a monkey? If you don't find him, you'll face the Colonel Crown! Yes, Corporal! Don't let him get away! Too late! Lacey Wom! We were destined to train together, traitor! Sorry, chum, but I have to get to India. One more step and you're a dead man! Don't be frightened. I'm not here to hurt you. I would never hurt them. Leave us be! Out! 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 Stop! 
stop right there! Did you think that you could get away from me? Search that house! Search every corner! I hope this holds. He's on the roofs! After him! Search every corner of the city. Don't skip a single house. Where is your honor, Lazy Wom? That plane is our only chance of getting away. Who was in charge of guarding How do we get that soldier out of there? I'm going after him. He won't get away. Help! Save me from this rabbit dog! Rabbit dog? Every man for himself! <laughs> Remember flying a model like this? Oh, don't worry. Flying is like riding a bicycle. Look, Nadim Hafiz and Altair. I'll never forget you guys. Brace yourself, Snowy. I'm going to try a few tricks to lose them. <laughs> Let's go down into the canyon. If we fly into open sky, they can shoot us down. Look, Snowy. These air currents are helping us lose them. <laughs> Soldier, head for the canyon. Captain, it's really dangerous for me. For me, too. Uh, I mean, uh, it'll make you a great pilot, just like me. Great idea, Captain. I hope I don't... Great idea, Captain. I hope I don't disappoint you. They don't know we can hear them on our radio, too. Well, we'll see if they can keep up with us. <laughs> I think we've lost them. See if you can still see them. <laughs> what? They're still there? Dash! Obstacles. Hey, Captain, 
my training is paying off. I am zipping around here like a regular hummingbird. Crumbs. Stop babbling and keep your eyes open. Look out below. Hummingbird on the attack. to trick them. We survived. Colonel Flood will go bananas. And now, off to India. <laughs> After crossing half a continent, we were close to our destination, the next spot on Fuad's map. empty, so... Brace yourself, Snowy! Here we go! <laughs> the trees cushioned our fall, so we ended up with just a few bruises. Luckily, the plane came with its own first aid kit, so all we needed was the book of instructions. Especially after it landed on us. We set off to find the Indian hideout of the kiosk plot. But the jungle had something else in store for us. The kiosk symbol. Here. That's amazing. Mm, fresh paint. Got a trail to follow. Who on earth could have painted the sign? Oh? Professor Sarcophagus! You're alive! Hello and good evening. Hmm. Pleasant weather we're having, isn't it? This is incredible. It is indeed. But practice makes perfect, so if you don't mind. How did you end up here in India? India? But this is Egypt, young man. Didn't you see the pyramids on your way? I thought I'd never see you again. Thank you. But I don't remember seeing you before, loyal subject. Uh, all right, but... Enough chit-chat. I'm putting the finishing touches to my new palace. But at least tell me all you've gone through since we parted on the Red Sea. Shh! Not so loud! I'll tell you, but you must swear to keep it a secret. I am... Arrow Gravity the Second! <laughs> oh? 
<laughs> Poor fellow. He's stark raving bonkers. We need to find him a doctor. And shelter from the storm. Met before. Sorry to bother you, sir, but we got lost in the jungle, and then we found. Behold, Ramses the Second, Lord of Fire, Scourge of the Hittites, a very, very naughty boy. <laughs> Expecting a patient, Dr. Finney? Not really, Major. So, your friend's name is. He's Ramesses II, of course, the legendary pharaoh. I see. Would you please follow me upstairs, my lord? Oh, I'm deeply honored, Almighty Ra. Yes, yes, of course. Now, come with me. Welcome to my humble abode, Mr... I'm Tintin, reporter. I'm happy to count you among my guests. Dinner will be served very soon. Finally, some luck. A shelter from the storm, a doctor to help the professor... Ah, <sighs> time to relax and make some friends. Don't you think, Snow? We? Hello. How? Such a surprise. I, I mean, a surprise because you weren't expected at all, uh, right? <laughs> I think I know you. What, me? Hardly. You've got no proof. Aren't you Zlotsky, the well-known author? Uh, um, yes, uh, that's me. Just a poet. Well-known. I just write. Nothing else. <laughs> Brave Dave Braves the Plains, a Wild West epic super scope blockbuster. your friend is. He's not always that colourful. Thankfully, I'm Mrs. Snowball. And I am 
He's my husband. We came here from England in search of antiques to decorate our manor. thinking your friend mistook everyone for Egyptian gods except except for you and me curious isn't it I guess we aren't divine enough you may come upstairs now young man Opium smuggling on the rise. Crop disease increases farmers' famine. Hmm, could both stories be connected? The Major looks like a proper adventurer here. Ah, there he is. Sleep well, my friend. That's all I can do for him for the time being. Will he ever recover his reason, Doctor? Hopefully. There's a clinic 30 miles from here. The director is a friend of mine. But I don't want to see Auntie Hennett, mere mummy. She smells like a Hittite camel. He looks pretty calmed right now. He simply wouldn't take his sedative, but I won. What's your diagnosis, Doctor? Well, he appears to be in a state of euphoric delirium induced by a poison of sorts. Thanks for your help, Doctor. Just doing my job. Mummy. Bring me the dream blankie. I'm c c c c cold and scared of the bright eyes. He's cold in the middle of the jungle. Unbelievable. Here you go. There's a good professor. He's sleeping like a child and acts like a child, too. A kiosk cigar band? Here of all places! Hmm. Colonel Fawad's letter mentioned a jungle hideout. Could it be this house? I need to find more clues without stirring suspicions. Looks like a really expensive and antique fan. Thanks for attending to my friend, Doctor. It's my duty. Besides, we're not done with him yet. You said there's a hospital nearby. Our mental institution. I'll take you there in the morning and introduce you to the Director. My friend's been poisoned. 
I believe so. Never seen anything like it before. So there's no cure? It's not my area of expertise, so let's keep our fingers crossed. Hmm. It can't be him. Otherwise, he wouldn't have helped the professor. As a doctor, what's your opinion on cigar smoking? That's a strange question. I'm a reporter. I'm writing a story about it. Oh, they're dreadfully unhealthy. That's why I prefer a good pipe. What are you looking for on that shelf? Just something to read. The Major has a wonderful collection. Pretty clean for a house with so many smokers, and cigar bands popping out from under the blankets. I read there's a rise in the opium farming. Those poor farmers are just trying to get by, but they're being extorted by criminals. It's my duty to stop them, but their leaders are so cunning. So you're fond of smoking your pipe? I quit a few months ago, but it relaxes me to bite it and think. How long have you been in India? Not long enough. The day I return to England will be a sad one. He can't be one of the smugglers. He truly sounds like an honest man. Can you tell me more about your guests? Dr. Finney has his own practice not far from here. The Snowballs arrived a few days ago. They're traveling to China. And Mr. Slotsky has been my guest ever since the famine started, writing poems all day in his own room. Another clean ashtray. Used to light cigars? I wonder. No, that doesn't prove anything. Mr. Zlotsky? Ah! Ah! Young man, it's you. <laughs> what do you want? Are you writing a new book? Uh, no. Yes! Uh, it's a poem. A book of poems. And I'm... I'm really inspired. Oh yes, so I'd rather be left alone, please. <laughs> Is everything all right? You seem a bit... Nervous? No! I mean, yes! I mean, the storm, you know, gives me a bit of a migraine. <laughs> he's really nervous. Let's test if he's telling the truth. Does it smell like tobacco around here? No, absolutely not. No one ever smokes cigars in this room. I never said anything about cigars. It's more like pipe tobacco. Ah, oh, yes. Uh, no, of course. A pipe. Uh, pipe tobacco. Here. Don't! Uh, I mean, uh, why don't you go back to the party, young man? I need a little silence around here. <laughs> All evidence points to Zlotsky. I need to get him out of here.
Evening, Sahib. Anything I can do for you? You don't need to call me Sahib. My name is Tintin. It's our form of courtesy, Tintin Sahib. It just means sir. That food smells delicious. It's Dokla, a very spicy appetizer from my home in Gujara. We'll serve it as soon as the cook finishes Mr. Zlotsky's non-spicy version. Are you shooing flies away? I can't see them. It's preventative shooing, just in case. What's with Mr. Zlotsky and spicy food? A month ago, he took some curry by mistake. It had him drinking in the kitchen for hours. <laughs> Ever since, we mark his non-spicy dishes. They have no mark, which means they're all spicy. He gets very, very nervous when I try to enter his bedroom. Aren't you tired of just standing there? I can shoo the flies away for you so you can take a walk. Uh, well, thank you, Sahib, but I'm all right. Is my dockler ready? It's right here. Spiceful and fly-free. Come to think of it, I'd prefer the non-spicy dockler as well. Oh, you are missing a delight, Tintin Sahib. But I'll oblige. Your dockler will be ready in no time. Chicken. Mr. Zlotsky? I told you. Will you... Uh, I'm working. I brought you some... Oh. Dokla. Uh, and... It's the safe kind. Again. I miss writing, but I can write about the cigars plot when I get to the end of it. Poor guy, he doesn't even know what day he's living in. It looks delicious, but after what I've just seen, I'm not taking the risk. A poet struggling with inspiration. Or maybe... remorse?
Hmm, what's that? A sort of box. And this paper? Yes, but hmm? what's this? It's one of the statuette heads missing at the tomb of Kiosk. Could this mean that... Mr. Tintin, what exactly are you doing here? Uh, I'm sorry, Major, but uh, Mr. Slotsky... Yes? I have reason to suspect he's a criminal. It has to do with a smuggling plot operating in Egypt, Arabia, India... Shh! He can't see us here. If that's true, we're all in danger. We should protect them. Oh! Ah, are you alright? That dagger! A fakir told me it has the power to fall before anyone threatened by serious danger. Uh, Mr. T Mr. Tintin is cursed. He should leave. Please. No. It's just the nail. It's... <gasps> you hear that? It's the curse. We'll all... We'll all die unless Tintin leaves. I'll go, sir. No. I'll go. You protect them. Please. It's the curse, Mr. Tintin! So many books about jungle folklore. No wonder they're so superstitious. you hear that bang? I think it came from upstairs. You should leave, or we're all done for. Vanished again. Oh, so that's where the bang came from. Your friend has been kidnapped by a ghost. Yes. Where's my ghost? Save me! Help! A ghost! See? But that's... <sighs> Wait here. Compose yourselves, gentlemen. There's bound to be a logical explanation for this. Footprints. Ashes and coal, I believe. I just leaves Lotsky's statuette right here. Oh! 
Oh. Oh. oh dear, oh dear, it was ghastly, a ghost, I saw a ghost. I knew it, but... He's still here. But that's impossible. I'll see about that. You doomed us all. Leave and forget about this place. Please, Lusty Sahib, stop drinking water. You will burst if you keep doing that. The dagger, it's gone. You should leave, Mr. Tintin, and forget everything you've seen here. Wait, it's no good trying to chase him tonight. But he's my friend. A mad friend with a dagger lost in the jungle during a stormy night. And there's the other thing you told me. We'll investigate tomorrow morning. The next day, we searched through the wilderness for poor Professor Sarcophagus. And just as we were about to lose all hope, we found a crucial clue. The Professor's hat. He must be close. What do you think, Snowy? How do I look? Or is the hat too posh for my outfit? Maybe it would go better with my dinner suit, don't you think? <laughs> Professor, what are you doing? <laughs> what? <laughs> Why are you running away? Death is your destiny. What are you talking about, Professor? Here, the eyes want Tintin's blood. What eyes? What's going on, Professor? The guards have already accepted Tintin. Ra will light the way to his tomb. Ramses II will send him there. And Anubis and Osiris will welcome him to the underworld. Snowy, he's gone completely mad. Stop! This could be dangerous! Can't we fix this some other way? Don't run! Death isn't bad! And running from your destiny is bad! Snap out of it, Professor! I have to be careful if I want to survive here. If you don't die, the eyes will punish me! What eyes? Whose eyes? The eyes! The eyes! They're everywhere! None of this makes any sense. Stop! This could be dangerous! Tintin must die! Ram says the second must kill him! But if Tintin runs that fast, Ramses the Second will never catch him. Is someone threatening you, Professor? Tintin, 
Would you be so kind as to run a bit slower so I can kill you? No! Oh, Tintin is so selfish. He refuses to be killed. Gods, help me. Trip him for me. Put a tree in his pipe. Strike him with lightning, if necessary. But stop him. I don't want to die. Gods, didn't you hear me? Run, Snowy. I don't think he'll come to his senses. Head. I won't resist. Professor, stop. We're going to get dizzy. You stop. If I stop, the eyes will kill well, me. If I stop, the eyes will kill me. Well, I'd rather you be the one to die. Nobody has to die. The eyes disagree with that. Oh, this doesn't make sense. I was chasing you. How can that be? Give me that dagger! <sighs> Please, compose yourself. <laughs> I want my dagger! Calm down and answer me. Why did you run away? You could have gotten killed. The eyes! They ordered me to do it! <laughs> Why did you try to kill me? Kill you? Are you joking? I adore you! What? My dear Sesostris, brother conqueror, you haven't seen a boy by the name of Tintin around here, have you? We must finish him off. What would you do if I gave you your dagger back? Oh, kill Tintin! Destroy Tintin! I think I'll keep it then. Beanie? Whose eyes are they? Why are they ordering you to kill me? Oh, my head! I can't betray him! Oh. Fight it, Professor! Horus! <laughs> Lord of the hunt, Pharaoh of the heavens. Oh, here we go again with the gods. Let's try. Ramesses the second, you are free. Go find the eye. Caution, my faithful Snowy. We don't know what lies ahead. The kiosk symbols will lead me to the eyes. The gods have placed an optical in my path. What was that? Anubis, is that you? Unless I do something, the Professor won't get up on his own. I need it. Ha ha ha! This is no accident. Thank you, Anubis, for your help. Have imagined it. Another symbol. Oh, a snake, a snake.
The snake attacked me! It attacked me! Help! Sekhmet! Help! Roast it! The snake is after me! It, it turned against its own pharaoh! Stop chasing me, snake! I command you! Unless I do something, he'll run in circles forever. Maybe he'll calm down if he finds a new seat. From this day on, I declare all stakes enemies of Egypt. Serpent, let us make amends. I won't hurt you if you don't hurt me. Curse you, Snake. Curse you and all of your kin. Help! Sekhmet! Help! Roast it! The snake is after me. It, it turned against its own pharaoh. A symbol. I have to find the eyes. Farewell, demon snake. The eyes are calling me. There you are. I'm coming, Snowy. The guards put a new obstacle in my path. The eyes are calling me. I can't resist them. I need to get to the eyes. Anubis, Osiris, Neftis, Horus. Whoever will listen to me, please give me a hand. I have to find the eyes. If I don't find them, I'll go insane. God Ra, father of all gods, if you don't help me, no one else will. The gods put a new obstacle in my path. The eyes are calling me. I can't resist them. I need to get to the eyes. Anubis, Osiris, Neftis, Horus, whoever will listen to me, please give me a hand. I have to find the eyes. If I don't find them, I'll go insane. God Ra, father of all gods, if you don't help me, no one else will. The gods put a new obstacle in my path. There he is, and he's stuck again. Anubis, Osiris, Neftis, Horus, whoever will listen to me, please give me a hand. I have to find the eyes. If I don't find them, I'll go insane. God Ra, father of all gods, if you don't help me, no one else will. The gods put a new obstacle in my path. The eyes are calling me. I can't resist them. I need to get to the eyes. It seems that it wasn't Anubis.
Thank you, mighty Ra, father of all gods. Another one! A symbol? The gods are on my side. Oh, Sirius, thank you for giving me a new symbol. Splendid. A new symbol, I'm on the right track. The gods have led me to a crossroads. More symbols. Horace, this symbol was your doing. I know your handwriting. I'll follow this symbol. So close. This is quite a bind. Which way to lead him so he gets up the stairs? Neftis, we haven't spoken in ages, yet you come to my aid. The gods have led me to a crossroads. Nearly there. The gods have led me to a crossroads. Another one! Oh, I must be very close! Wonderful! The gods have led me to a crossroads! The gods have led me to a crossroads. Another symbol. This is no coincidence. One move and... One move and 
what? One move and... And, uh... What was that? I think it's the fluffy furball. <gasps> I found him. Is that you, Snowy? No, oh, it's just a coconut. Oh, golly. It's like the eyes are staring at me through the coconut. Ouch! Huh? What was that? with the eyes. What happened here? Oh, Snowy! Good job, boy. You did this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
Watch out, Snowy! Oh, whoopee! Oh, what? <laughs> Professor, why don't you give me the gun? Stay here. You'll be safe. Crumbs! He got away! Wait, Snowy. If we go after him, we'll never find him. But he did say he'd use a writer to kill me both know who he means. Let's go question him. How do I get him to spill the beans? Subtly, so he gets caught up in his own lies? Perhaps by appealing to a possible sense of guilt? Or with threats? At the end of the day, he is a criminal. That's the strategy. I can't say. Uh, he, he'll punish me. I need to know. Have courage. All right. Uh, his name is... Ah! No. The tragedy, the poison that makes you mad. He escaped. Coward. His name! Quick! Name! Ra! Glory be to the mighty Ra! I am not Ra, you fool! Dr. Finney gave us a sealed letter for the director of the mental asylum and told us to hurry, as his friend was going on a holiday that very afternoon. The Major lent us his car and off we went. But if I knew what awaited us there, I wouldn't have been that hasty.
Besides the letter for the hospital director, Dr. Finney gave us a map showing how to get there. I couldn't hold the map while driving, neither could Snowy. So the professor took it, and it was, well, uh, challenging?
telling you is all explained in Dr. Finney's letter. Uh, uh, let's have a look. Uh, oh. Uh, uh, oh, didn't see that coming. Very clever of Dr. Finney. Everything all right, Doctor? Please, wait in the garden, while I arrange for your friends to be checked in. The garden patients are quite harmless, you know. Don't worry. Everything will be just fine. Gosh, that's a nice car you're driving. What model is it? Are you in a race? I don't think he wants to talk to me. Subject, kneel before your emperor. Pardon? Are you disobeying Napoleon Bonaparte? Dash, if he and Zlotsky meet, there'll be pandemonium. I'm sorry, of course not, Emperor. Then praise my noble horse, Marongo. <laughs> what a beautiful horse. That is not enough! What a magnificent and powerful horse. Nothing compares to it. Still not enough. Is that the best praise you've got? Envy is a declaration of inferiority. But don't worry. He's just one among my 129 horses. And you'll be horse number 130. But I'm not a horse. Shut up! Horse! Horses don't talk. But I'm a hu- I said to shut up! Your punishment for continuing to talk will be to be a donkey! Now get out of here, dumb stupid little donkey! I'm so distinguished and refined. So, so distinguished and important, don't you think? Um... What? Why didn't you immediately say yes? Because I didn't want to inter- You don't think I'm distinguished and refined? What's wrong with you? Or is it that you think you're more distinguished than me? Yes, I am more distinguished than you. How dare you? I'll kill you, you rude little rat. No, you rude little worm. No, you rude little slug. All right, all right. You're elegant. Elegant? Just elegant? Not the most distinguished man on earth? I'm sorry, of course you are. You're as distinguished as... Apollo, 
the Greek god of perfection, harmony, and balance. Apollo. I'll take it. We share the same qualities. Lucky for Apollo that someone dares to compare him to me. You may go. Hello, and you are? The gardener. Aha. Uh -huh. Just the gardener? Just the gardener. Maybe some famous gardener? Nope, not a famous gardener, just an anonymous unknown gardener. Would you rather have a different job? Have you thought about quitting? I'm useless. This is the only thing I know how to do. At least you're good at this. Truth is, not really. Maybe that's why the pay is so bad. But they give you everything here. If I were crazy, but I'm not crazy, as far as I know. Oh, so you really are the gardener? That's what I told you. I thought you were mad. And what can you tell me about the patients? What do you want to know about? I'd like to know more about Napoleon. He thinks he's Napoleon. Aha. Uh -huh. Anything else? His horse's name is Marengo. You are not a man of many words. Nope. And what else can you... Rumor has it that if you become his horse or his donkey, you'll go crazy and end up locked up in the asylum. What about the fellow who drives an imaginary racing car? He's the Maharaja of Guy Pajama. Golly! Another one, eager for greatness. No, he's really the Maharaja. Or at least he was, before he lost his mind. We think he was bitten by some poisonous bug, because he arrived with a bite on his neck. Could it be the same poison they used on Sarcophagus and Zlotsky? Now he spends all day racing in the 24 hours of Le Mans. He was gutted yesterday. He said he'd raced like never before and lost. Like always. Ha! <laughs> Funny. What about the distinguished and refined man? What a pain. I enjoy telling him he's rude every morning. Oh my. That's a bit harsh. I never said I was a nice guy. The man sleeping there. He sleeps as much as he can. He believes that reality is in dreams and dreams in reality. For him, wakefulness is a nightmare from which he can only awaken by sleeping. I'm sorry, but I can't continue this conversation. I have a very important dinner later, and I must finish my work first. You again, dumb donkey! What do you want? I heard a rumor that if someone becomes your horse or your donkey, they will end up locked up in the asylum. Be careful! Don't trust anyone but me. This place is not what it seems to be. What do you mean? We are surrounded by Russian spies. Tsar Alexander I wants my head, but he won't get it. You are distinguished. You don't have to listen to the gardener. He tells me I'm rude every morning. Well... You're not. Do you really mean it? I do. Thank you. You're the best thing that's ever happened to me. Dear Maharaja of Guy Pajama, could I ask you a few questions? Would it be possible for you to park your car for a moment? Hmm. How about we race before talking?
This is the last corner. Whoever comes out of it ahead will win. Should I let him win his first race, or will he think I'm giving it to him? Right. I lost the game. If I'd just gone faster around that last corner. Oh, I'm doomed to fail. But ask me whatever you want. You've earned it. Though I only have time for three questions before the next race begins. Do you know anything about the opium trade in India? I know you shouldn't fight the smugglers. If you do, you'll end up like me. In an asylum? I like the way you think, boy. And I agree with you. The world of racing is a world of madness. Are you the Maharaja of Gai Pajama? Me? The Maharaja of Gai Pajama? Are you mad? The only position I've held is that of driver. But I remember the Prince of Gai Pajama well. Always held a special place in my heart. If you see him sometime, look after him. Have you ever seen any cigars with an Egyptian symbol on them? No, no, please! I haven't done anything! Please don't hurt me! It's all right. Are you fine? Huh? Of course, I'm fine. My next race starts in a few minutes. You'll have to excuse me, but I must race. A race car driver is nothing more than his next race. I should thank the gardener for everything he told me about the patients. I'm sorry, but what are you doing? I already told you I have a very important dinner today. And why are you watering the hat? Well, that's obvious. So it'll grow into a top hat. Do you think it makes sense to attend a formal dinner wearing a bowler hat? Uh, no, of course not. How silly of me. Gosh, I didn't expect that. Mr. Tintin, will you come with me and complete some formalities? Of course. Look, this is the kind of board that we have set aside for your poor friend. As I was saying, dear director, the mad one is Tintin. Lock him up. He is an extremely dangerous character. We'll take good care of your friend. You have nothing to worry about. Errol Ramses II! Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte! That's a good one. And I'm King Louis XIV. Pleasure, Louis XIV. Until next time! <laughs> Director, huh? one of the patients took the gardener's scissors. Ah, uh, no, not again. Here's your soup. My soup? That's what I think of your <laughs> soup! <laughs> Help! Get this off of me! <laughs> 
Come on. Your head's too big. What's down to this way out here out of your stable? Come here. Run, Snowy. Hey, you. Dash. Why are you out of your room, huh? Tell me I'm distinguished and refined, or I won't let you pass. I don't have time for that. Be careful. So you're Napoleon's horse, too? No, I'm Pegasus, Zeus's horse. Nice to meet you, divine horse. Snowy, where are you? Shouldn't that patient be locked up? Yeah, get him! Hey, have you seen a dog around here? You can do better than that. I have no time for this. And I have no time for rudeness. I will not tell you where your dog is. Crumbs. Why is there a pedestrian on the track? What an amateur race! I'm Pegasus, and I can fly. Oh, there he is. Grab him. The Russians, they are attacking. Take up your weapons and defend Paris with your lives. And how did you get here so fast? I'm a horse, dummy. I'm faster than you. Snowy, can you hear me? Where are you? How was the dinner? I'm cleaning. My friends arrive in a bit. Make way for Gerdius, the god of Gerdius! Where do you think you're going, deserter? Get back here! My dog, where is he? Still haven't learned your manners? Oh, come on! Tell me where my dog is! Tell you? Never! Get him! Hey, driver! Want to be my co You again? Surprised? I'm the fastest horse ever! You won't get past! <laughs> The Russians got me in the leg! Ah, call a nurse! You'll be alright. <laughs> I'm not so crazy as to believe what a horse says. Tell me. I want to hear it. You're insufferable. You're rude. I'm going to kill you. Only if you catch me first. Stop! No, where it's are for you? your own good. Trust me. This is for your own good. Stop! It's for your own good. Call Zeus, so he can ride me! Stop following me! You're not invited to my dinner! Well, I don't want to go! Offended? I've seen you somewhere! Indeed! I'm sure we've grazed together! We must have! I've got you! I've got you! Let's find a way out! Pardon me, Pegasus! Divine horse, you rude boy. Only my friends get to call me what Pegasus. More that? And I'll be the winner of the 24 hours of Le Mans. I hope you make it. Come back here. You'll get hurt. Let's all grab him. He's trapped. We'll see about that. Snowy, follow me. We made it! Stop! Stop! Stay where you are! Do not dilly-dally! Catching him! He's a patient after all! You've got to listen! I'm a reporter! Aha! Uh -huh. Another case of delusion! Le petit vingtième! Crumbs! I told you! I'm sane! Adil! Patient answer! End of the road! Stop it! I don't think so! Oh no! Not my tea break! You can interview Napoleon himself if you come back. But he's not the real Napoleon, right? Of course not, you idiot. It's a ruse. Maybe next time you'll have better luck. If you keep running, you'll lose your pet privileges. You'll never tear me and Snowy apart. That's it. No more being nice. You troublemaker. I'll put you in a straitjacket and send your little dog to a plastic kennel. Doctor, calm yourself. Wait until I catch you. Please, take a deep breath. I'll lock you up. Stop you with pills. I'll... Doctor, did you take your pills today?
train. I will take it out of here. Seize that recalcitrant resident. Keep up, Snowy. The train is coming. No, no, he's getting away. Quick, we mustn't miss that train. <laughs> I'll catch you! You again? But how did you... Fortune favors the righteous. Thought you'd given us the slip, did you, scoundrel? You're coming with us now, and no funny bit... Just saved our lives, young man. What's your name? Tintin. Reporter. Bow before the Maharaja of Gaipanchana. You. You. Please. Will you be my guest at the palace tonight? Don't worry, my friend. My secretary will soon finish organizing tomorrow's search. Everything's arranged, your highness. We leave at dawn. Thank you, my good Gondoladia. You may go. I hope Snowy is all right. Surely. Tomorrow we will find him. What if he's surprised by a tiger? They look like big cats, after all. And Snowy can't resist a fight with a cat. But didn't you tell me he fought a lion once? Well, yes, when we were in Africa. Then rest assured, lions and tigers are all the same. He'll be fine. He's a brave dog. He could be lost in the jungle. What if he can't find his way out? You mustn't worry, my friend. It's not as wild as it once was. I'm sure he'll come across a village. Last time I saw him near the railway tracks. Oh no, what if... From what you've told me, he seems smart enough to avoid a moving train. What if he's ambushed by that evil Fakir? Then I'd feel sorry for the Fakir. Snowy seems like a no-nonsense kind of dog. Talking about Snowy makes me sad. Understandably, you're my guest of honor. Choose a topic. Such a beautiful palace you live in. Very ancient, too. They say it was built over the ruins of a lost temple by my grandfather's grandfather. A temple? Amazing! Tell me more about the lost temple. It was probably built by the Gupta Empire and plundered by Mongol raiders. They say there's an underground section of the old temple connected to the palace by tunnels. I used to search for them when I was a boy, but they're probably just a myth. Dinner was delicious. 
Would you like some dessert? We have all kinds of fruit, pudding, dokula. That's very kind, but I'm stuffed. I wish I could feed my people as well as I do my guests. I read about the famine. It seems like a serious situation. And it's linked to opium trafficking. These scoundrels extort peasants so they grow opium poppies instead of rice. My brother and my father before him used to go after those smugglers when they were Maharajas. And now I continue their fight. But it sometimes seems like a lost cause to me. We will never win. Snowy and I met your brother, the former Maharaja. My brother? So you were in his hospital? How was he? He seemed happy. He thought he was racing the 24 hours of Le Mans. Ah, oh, he dreamed about that race. He even had his own vehicle designed. A kind of Alfa Romeo meets Amilcar. The Amilcar is quite a racing car. I drove one near Moscow. He never got to drive it, though, unfortunately. I wonder why fate has decided to be so cruel to my kingdom and my family. The tiger hunt sure was thrilling. I'd never been on one before. And quite unconventional. We don't usually subdue them by falling on them. It was pure luck that that tiger was there to break my fall. Indeed, we were very fortunate you were there to save us. And we'll always be thankful. Is it hard to govern a kingdom like Guy Pajama? It is indeed. My brother was the heir to my father's throne. But after he became... indisposed, I had to take over. These are dark times for Guy Pajama. And the people need their Maharaja. But sometimes that responsibility overwhelms me. Luckily, I have the help of my loyal secretary, Gandaladia. Did you call, your highness? There he is, as diligent and as attentive as ever. So I see. I don't need anything, my good Gandaladia. That is all for today. As you wish, your highness. I've got a few questions about being a Maharaja. Uneasy lies the head that wears a crown, as the great English bard once said. What would you do if you weren't the Maharaja? I'd play with my son. I feel like I'm missing out on his childhood. What's the worst duty of a Maharaja? Having to wear all those uniforms to parades and receptions. I see the tailor more than my own shadow. There must be something good about being a Maharaja. Well, one can help a great deal from a position of power like this one. But I sometimes feel burdened by so many responsibilities. Being a Maharaja is more complicated than I thought. Let's talk about something else. Ooh, if you'll excuse me, Your Highness, I think I'm going to bed now. Great idea. Tomorrow is going to be a long day, and... Oh no, that, that music again. Nobody. There's no one there anymore. What's that strange melody? I heard it for the first time, before my father went mad. And again, just before my brother did. It's the family curse. I'm doomed. What will happen to the kingdom, and to my son, if I go mad too? I don't think so. This is all too familiar and stinks of conspiracy, but I need to make sure. Slotsky spoke of a trafficker's hideout in Guy Pajama. What if the previous Maharajas had enemies? My brother suspected there was a powerful secret opium organization operating in the kingdom, but he was never able to prove it. Hmm. Both Slotsky and Sarcophagus went mad after getting shot with a dart. Did you ever notice a mark, or puncture, on your brother or father's neck? No, never, but, uh, wait, yes! Even in his madness, my father complained about an itch on his neck. The poison of madness affected Slotsky right away. 
Maybe. Did they both suddenly go crazy? Indeed. They went to bed after hearing the melody, and by the next morning they had gone completely mad. Listen to me closely, Your Highness. Your father and brother were shot with a poison dart, and I know who did it. Tonight, when you go to sleep, he's going to climb up to your window and shoot you. But I'll be waiting outside, and I'll follow him to his accomplices. But I'll be poisoned and mad. Just before, while you're hiding in another room, I'll make a dummy that looks just like you and put it in your bed. Together, we'll bring them down. They might come in handy for my new homemade Maharaja. I could use it to dress my fake Maharaja. But then again, it's going on the bed under the blankets, so there's no need. The Fakir will strike from over here, like he did with Zlotsky and the Maharajas before. Off to a good start. This can be the Maharaja's body. I saw this in a travel magazine. It's coal, a kind of charcoal to protect your eyelids. You've got to squeeze the bulb to make it work. A coconut again. It'll be perfect as the Maharaja's head. Hello? Who are you? What are you doing in my father's room? I'm Tintin, reporter. And you are? I'm the Prince of Guy Pajama. What's a reporter? A reporter travels the world on the hunt for stories. Wow, have you traveled really far? Well, I've been to Africa, Russia, America, Egypt, Arabia, and now India. Gee, I want to travel too. I'm making a dummy that looks like your father. For some kind of contest? Not exactly. Let's just say... It's hard to explain. I'm here to save your father, your highness. Do reporters save lives? Not really. But it happens to me sometimes. I like you. Come play with me. Sorry, I can't now, your highness. I have to help your father. Aw, but promise me you'll play later. Of course. Wait, how did you... Hmm. Now that's clever. Looks really comfortable, but no time to rest. There are enough clothes in here to dress an army. I could spend hours in here. Maybe later I can find something useful for my plan. I can't risk going out. My entire plan could be on the line. Whose room is this? Great snake! Uh, it won't budge! If I were to go out there now, I'd risk getting caught. Tintin! 
Quentin, you came! Can you show me how to play with the Latu? I'm really busy right now, Highness. Maybe later. Please? I haven't played with anybody in a long time. I can't play right now, Your Highness. Your father needs me. Please? Maybe we can play later, when I finish. Can we play now, please? All right, then. I'll teach you. Brilliant! First, you wrap the string around it. Carefully. Then, you take one of the ends, and... spin it! Bingo! There you go! Yay! This is so fun! See? Now you can try it any time! What's life in the palace like? Before, Papa and I used to go for elephant rides and play in the garden. But since he's Maharaja, he won't let me out of the palace. He can never play and he hardly smiles. There's a huge snake in the next room. Has it scared you? It's Coco, Daddy's secretary's pet. She's not that bad, and she likes the punji. Punji? They use it to charm snakes, and even make ropes levitate. I could show you how to play it if you'd like. I want to learn how to play the punji. Could you teach me? Of course. Now you try. Charmer. Keep the punji. Thanks, Your Highness. I saw your uncle not too long ago, Highness. My uncle? Really? Oh boy, I miss him so much. Where is he? Well... He's, uh, racing cars. He's quite a driver. It's not fair. He should be here being Maharaja. That way Papa wouldn't be so busy. I'm sure he'll come back soon. I must go now, but I'll be back. Oh, promise? Promise. I won't get any closer. It worked! The kiosk symbol! This is the room of a traitor. And another statue from the tomb. Is there any movement in the Ooh. corridor? Oh. <sighs> Understood, sir. <clears throat> hmm. I'd better lock that fool's door. Oh, stupid snake. Sleeping as usual. What a guardian. Oh? Who could that be? Yes. Oh, greetings, Grandmaster. Yes, yes. At midnight. The usual way. Window, dart, and bye-bye, Maharaja. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. Oh, don't worry. I'll lead the meeting. So it shall be done, Grandmaster. Oh, I almost forgot. 
stupid bird. How can it be so heavy? They couldn't look for another entry token. Phew, that was close. But now I know who the traitor is, and that I'll be sneaking into a secret meeting. The Maharaja's secretary was talking to a certain Grand Master, and the letter in Colonel Fawad's office mentioned him too. The leader of this smuggling ring, no doubt. Better safe than sorry. Let's try with this. An ear trumpet? The secretary doesn't seem deaf. Unless... Of course, that scoundrel uses this to spy on the Maharaja. Did it. Now let's finish the job. It's coal, a kind of charcoal to protect your eyelids. How can he climb so high? The scissors are too weak to peel the coconut. Plus, the tailor would kill me. Looks like some sort of ceremonial attire. I sneaked past a guard to get in here, to keep my plan an absolute secret. There are enough clothes in here to dress an army. I could spend hours in here. Maybe later I can find something useful for my plan. It won't work, and I can't risk going back in there. Wait, is that a real tiger? Fakir will strike from over here, like he did with Zlotsky and the Maharajas before. Alright, first I'll peel it. Then I'll make a hole. And voila! Hmm, it needs a little more work though. I'd love to dress like that. They might come in handy for my new homemade Maharaja. Looks really comfortable, but no time to rest. It still doesn't look like the Maharaja. Let's see, we've got tunics, turbans, slippers... Aha! I hope the Maharaja doesn't mind me ruining this stole to save him. Hmm, let's give it a go.
Not bad. Now the face. Looks like some sort of ceremonial attire. I knew they would come in handy eventually. I sneaked past a guard to get in here, to keep my plan an absolute secret. Wait, is that a real tiger? How can he climb so high? I knew they would come in handy eventually. I'd love to dress like that. It needs a nose, mouth, eyes, a beard. It looks expensive, and it's empty. And now, it's bedtime, Your Highness. There! The trap is set. It's getting late. I'd better get ready. Hang on. Where did he go? Is he up in the tree? Or is he inside the tree? That's it! Hmm. This is not the first time. This is not the first time I face this sort of brain teaser. Bingo. Huh. A tunnel. You won't escape me this time, Fakir. Ever since we parted ways, Snowy had never given up, and he was tracing my scent all through the Indian Railway. Of course, there were two more hounds following in my tracks, probably facing the wrong way. It was only a matter of time till they met, and a bit more till they found me. the center column. Wrong. The first one was easier. Thank <laughs> you. 
I hope the Fakir is not too far away. Of useless people. Who will I have to reprimand today? The kiosk symbol. I have to find out where he's going. Where is he? Every time! And then he said, the best time to... Shut up! Come on! This is the best part! Waka 31! What are you doing here? Sorry, boss. I, I was helping Worker 35 with... The... Back to your spot now! Yes, boss. I need you to go work somewhere else. It I'm won't happen again. Any but... more chances? Bring a post. Thank you, boss. It's the least any of us can do. You'd be surprised. We've got quite a few deadbeats here. If you're not here next time, I will personally stick one of Brother Horace's poison darts in you. Thank you, boss. Thank you? I mean, yes, boss. Worker 36, go make sure everything is okay in the control room before we go. Yes, boss. Time to go. Look uh, at 
35. Time to go. I'll just have to finish this and I'm done. Finish tomorrow. Don't leave for tomorrow what you could do today. And don't keep your boss waiting if you don't want to die in the most gruesome way possible. Huh? Hurry up! Who left this like this? They did a terrible job. I have this to be like careful. This place is crawling with guards. Just one second, please. Come on! Okay, I'm ready. Finally! Workers, that's all for today. I must find a safe way to get to the next room. Let's learn the truth about these infamous cigars once and for all. Fake cigars, full of opium. That's how the crooks outwitted the police in all their inquiries. They've killed Egyptologists, literally driven people mad, impoverished peasants, and ruined a whole country just to make money selling drugs. They won't get away with it, I swear. <laughs> Won't get away with it, I swear. Shame that these loathsome criminals have such good taste in graphic design. So the only tobacco these cigars have is the bare minimum to wrap around the opium tubes. Crooked, but clever. Poppy seed? Wait, there's opium in there. And of course, they fill these tubes with it. So what happened? The guy disappeared for 30 years. That's a long story. I'll tell you tomorrow. Oh no, I'm not leaving till you finish it. The guy was knee-deep in debt, and the best thing he could think to do was just split. And his wife and kids? He ditched them, and they inherited all his debts. Years later, his son, completely bankrupt, swore revenge. Did he get it? Hang That's on. the way that There's hooded scoundrel story went. Before we get to the that. people talking on the other side would see me. It'd be curtains for me. The thing is, the father made just one mistake before leaving. What mistake? When we reach the 26 years since he left, I'll tell you. But the son also made a mistake. He could have found his father much sooner. When? How? Eight years after he split. But we'll get to that. The most incredible thing is that the father ran into his entire family after they'd been gone for three years. And what happened? Hold on, we're almost there. First, I have to tell you what happened in the two years after he disappeared. That's the way that hooded scoundrel went. But the people talking on the other side would see me. It'd be curtains for me. It's a really long story, honestly. There's no way I'll be able to tell it to you today. Well, we'll stay until tomorrow if we have. I need to know how... Hey, maybe I could sneak into the next room in one of those wagons. I guess I'd need to find a way to get that wagon moving, plus something to cover myself with. Here we go. But we haven't even gotten started. Then why did you start telling me the story? If you knew you wouldn't finish it. I didn't think you'd get so into it. 
There's no uh -oh. way I can sleep. It looks like a wagon has to be full of cigar boxes sun. to get to the other side. And every layer has to have 15 of them. Hmm. So that's what I need to do. A single layer of 15 cigar boxes, glued to each other so I can hide under it. I hate you. I won't let you leave. Hmm. I think this will be really useful. Two boxes. I guess I'm going to need them. I'm sleepy. I don't care. I still need to, to get the wagon I wish it on my and make enemy. a fake layer of cigar boxes before I can carry out my plan. It's a really long story, honestly. There's no way I'll be able to tell it to you today. Well, we'll stay until tomorrow. One, two, three... Thirteen boxes. Though... Hmm, I'm afraid the other two boxes I found are missing something. Now that I see these... Time to put the seal on the last two boxes. And I give you Tintin's seal of guarantee. Time to label the last two boxes. I'm as good a counterfeiter as those rogues, with the significant difference that I'm doing it for a good cause. They look just like the real thing. I mean, the real fake thing. That's how the crooks outwitted the police in all their inquiries. tool, but also a weapon, if things were to go south. locked. Luckily, I've got this. Hooray! Shoot. I don't think this moves the rail I'm interested in. Eureka! Now I just need something to cover me while I'm in the wagon. Just what I was looking for. Hmm, if I'm not wrong, I've got all I need to make my cover. The time has come to put my plan to the test. This works. If you don't tell me how it ends, I'll never forgive you. Wait a minute, here's another wagon. I don't care. I want to know how the story ends. You're a pain in the bummer. 
Make sure it's all there, and I'll tell you. Finally. One, two, three. All right, fill to the brim. Fifteen boxes per leg. Now, tell me. Nope. What? Why not? I've realized that the best thing about the story is how desperate you are to hear what happens. You've got some nerve. You'll pay for this. What are you doing? Get off me, you lunatic. I wonder where this leads. Proceed, brother. Hmm. I'll need one of those costumes to get through. Now that I look the part, let's knock. Show me your token, brother. Oh, I... I must have forgotten it in my other row. No token, no entry. Another statuette from the Tomb of Kiosk. Seems like every member of this Brotherhood has one. He'll be knocked out for a while, but tied up, just in case. Dr. Finney is part of this conspiracy. That explains a few things, like why they tried to lock me up in the mental hospital. The note he wrote was a trap. Finney must have come through here. Show me your token, brother. Mm. Welcome, brother Ra. The meeting will begin soon. Belly of the Beast. I should look for an escape route, just in case. In the meantime, I'll have a little chat with our hooded brothers. I did my best to defend Abudin. Please, brother. Deal with the Grandmaster yourself, Donkey Desert God. For the hundredth time, Set is a mighty jackal, not a donkey. Ah, wise brother Ra. You are my last salvation. Abudin did not fall because of me. It was because of those blasted spies. Defend me before the Grand Master, please. All right, all right. But in return, I'll ask you for a favor. I'll, I'll do anything. You will call a truce with Patrash Pasha and his Bedouins. How? Oh, but they hate my guts. I can't. No excuses. You'll bargain with them and shower them with gifts. All right.
could be a way out if everything goes south. I've heard that Brother Thoth will be unavailable from this meeting onward. Why don't we offer his seat to my good friend, Miss Suhi? Silence, you fool! Saying our names or showing our faces is forbidden. Uh, oh yes, my apologies. My dear Ra, there you are. Finally, some clever conversation round here. Why, yes indeed. So, when will the meeting start? As soon as Brother Neckbet arrives. He's making us wait, as usual, to boost his self-importance. Well, I think that... That we should stop using hollow cigars. We know that, dear. Blast that tinted spy and those mangy Bedouins! Could be a way out if everything goes south. Beautiful, isn't it? A map of our current operations. I made it myself. Now that we have no spies in the military bungalow, we need a replacement or silence that meddling major once and for all. Morocco has potential. There are contacts in Baghar interested in doing business. We use the tomb of Kiosk as a warehouse and headquarters for Cairo. The curse of the Pharaoh keeps the curious away. After the fall of Aboudin, we will need a new base near the Red Sea. Guy Pajama is the headquarters, as you well know. From here, we control all the routes to Asia, east and west. The far east will be a big market if we lose the route to the west. But why don't we... Why not use tin cans? Cans of anchovies, or tomatoes, or crab? When will the meeting begin? When Brother Neckbet arrives. What about the Grand Master? Will he be joining us too? Why so many questions, Brother Knoom? I am loyal, I swear it! Kiosk and Kai Pajama. Then prove it by waiting there until the meeting starts. I salute you, brother. I know. Beg your pardon? You can't hide anything from me. I don't know what you're talking. Don't play fool with me. You let the poet go free. Even mad, he knows too much. Oh, yes, yes. I'll fix that, brother. Indeed you will. The Grand Master does not forgive failure. Phew, that was close. I'm watching you, always. I'm watching you, always. They all look like the Egyptian gods I saw at the Tomb of Kiosk. Reminds me of that statuette I found in the Maharaja's secretary's office. Looks like the presiding seat at the table. A cat goddess. Similar to the drawing I saw in Egypt. Hey, that's my token. So this is my seat. I'd prefer a place closer to that door on the right though. Just in case. Whichever god this is, it's the closest seat to the door. But I won't be able to change it. 
unless he's distracted. An eye? Ha! Huh. I think I know who this seat belongs to. Reminds me of the statuette I found in Fouad's office. The professor told me about this crocodile god. Sebek, maybe? Could be a way out, if everything goes south. What would Mummy say if she saw me like this? I'm watching you, always. Greetings, Brother Ra. Kiosk in my pajama. Huh? I beg your pardon? You know, kiosk in my pajama. It's the password to prove I'm not a spy. Oh, uh, right. Fear not, my brother. I have to remember that, just in case. Have you ever met him, the Grand Master? Well, never in person, but his reputation precedes him. A real entrepreneur, a true Marquis, a villain so grand that no hero will ever match him. <laughs> we'll see about that. Mind if I swap seats? Why should I? It's so hot in here. Let an old man sit next to the door. And what do I gain? You'd be sitting closer to the centre, and the ones in charge. Oh, I see, yes. But Brother Horace will never allow it. I'll take care of that. You just go and change the sigils. So, brother, do you fear there may be spies present tonight? Why? You have anything to confess? I just want you to keep up the good work. I'll be vigilant as always. Never forget that. Sit. Brothers, except for our leader who was unable to come, we are all present. The session can begin. First, important news. We've gotten rid of the Maharaja of Gai Pajama for good. As we speak, he has lost his reason. Nothing more than stands in the way of... Hello? Yes, security? What? A message from Cairo. Our situation is dire. Our Cairo headquarters has been discovered. Only our leader was able to get away. He's coming here by air. What? Knocked out? Brothers, there is a traitor in our midst. Our rules do not allow us to show our faces, so you will whisper the password to me one by one. And whoever is unable to give it will be executed immediately. You start. Give me the password. Kiosk and Guy Pajama. Idiot! Couldn't you have whispered it? Now everyone knows. All right then, I'll go into the next room. You will come in one after the other, and give me the password of our last meeting. Last 
now, let's take a peek at the faces of the Brotherhood. The Maharaja's secretary. So much for the loyal advisor. Colonel Thwad, just as I thought. Mrs. Snowball. So this one must be... Mr. Snowball, of course. A Japanese man I've never met before. The Fakir, of course. What a crew. The only one left is the notorious Grand Ma... Huh? Crikey! <laughs> only an imbecile would trip on his own clothes. <laughs> You were saying? Ugh! Stupid robes! <laughs> like I said, imbecile! <laughs> Wait! This is ridiculous! I suggest we take off these robes and continue with the chase. Deal! Of course. It's only fair. <laughs> now you. Take your time. All right. Now wait for time. <laughs> hey! That's not fair! Give up! You're done! The only ones who are done are all those fools! As our leader is alive, the Brotherhood will persevere. Sooner or later, the Grand Master will fall too. How dare you pronounce his name? I didn't. That's his title. I forgot how insufferable you are. Don't worry. You won't have to see me once you're in jail. Absolutely! You're going to pay for all the people you turned mad! You are going to pay for all the people you turned mad! <laughs> you are so naive! No one gets what they deserve! The world is your place! I will never accept something like that! Ha! That's exactly what the last Maharaja said! You're despicable! He adored his nephew! And now, because of you, he thinks he's driving in the 24 hours of Le Mans! Yes! That was a good one! Come back here, you coward! Quit now! You've nowhere to run! You're not the one who decides that! The palace is filled with guards! Nothing that a poison dart can fix! I'll get you, if it's the last thing I do! Where did he go? An intruder! Get him! Crumbs! Surrender! You're trapped! Don't move! You are done! Turn yourself in, and I promise we won't kill you! Crikey, it's locked. Backed. He's too far away. Another locked door. That's bad. Turn yourself in, and I promise we won't kill you. I can't believe it. This door is locked. Turn yourself in, and I promise we won't kill you. Surrender. You're trapped. He's too far away. Block his way! What is he? A man of the runner? You have no way out! In the name of the law, hands up! Snowy! 
you're okay. Oh, my dear friend. Congratulations, dear friend. You pulled off a master stroke. What? But don't you want to arrest me anymore? We now know that you and your dog are innocent. The police raided their hideout in Cairo and found a blacklist that included your name. There was also a plan of this hideout. That's how we discovered... <laughs> He's got away again! Oh, after him! <laughs> we'll get it, young man! As soon as we got out, we learned that someone had taken the prince and helped the Fakir escape. There was no time to despair. We needed the fastest car to chase down the villains. I got behind the wheel and stepped on the accelerator, determined to stop the Brotherhood once and for all. A few miles further, in the middle of the jungle, I spotted their car. It took me a few more miles to realize that Thompson and Thompson were gone. Who's the driver? Thompson, what do you think? You don't know what to say, huh? Perhaps Thompson has an idea. Friends? Are you here? Friends? They're gone. Surely they got scared. This is not for everyone, even for grown men like them. What a leap! I hope the car holds on. <laughs> well, Snowy, Thompson and Thompson left us. We'll have to save the prince on our own. This road is really testing my nerves. We can't lose them. I'd never forgive myself if something happened to the prince. <laughs> We have to use this downhill to our advantage. <laughs> Let's see how fast this thing can go. <laughs> I bet the old Maharaja would have burned rubber in this thing. Which is exactly what we're going to do. at this pace. <laughs> survive a fall like that. <laughs> Hold on, Snowy. These turns are dangerous. Ooh. We have to use this downhill to our advantage. <laughs> Hooray! Now or never. <laughs> we won't have a better chance to make up lost time. not easy to catch up to them. How hard it is to catch up with such a driver. <laughs> Tighten your grip. I have to hit the brakes. That driver doesn't seem too worried about dying. Ooh. Fear not, Snowy. We'll save him, I promise. You know I always keep my word. <laughs> Let's see how fast this thing can go. Ah. I bet the old Maharaja would have burned rubber in this thing. Which is exactly what we're gonna do. Ah. 
Come on, come on. If we keep up this pace, we'll definitely catch up to them. This road has to end somewhere. Let's see how good a driver you are. Prince. Poor devils. Poor Prince. He didn't deserve such a terrible death. There's nothing we can do. Agree. How? Don't come any closer. No, not again. I must resist. The eyes. The eyes. <laughs> Bring him and leave him next to the prince. Yes, Grand Master. We can finally finish this little vermin. Poison him. I want him to go crazy. As you wish, Grandmaster. First, though, I want to ask him a few questions. All right, Tintin, who sent you? I was sent on a mission as a reporter to Shanghai. I see. So you ran into us by chance, did you? Let me think about my next question. Dog again. Help the Maharaja fight off the Fakir's poison dart in the palace. It wasn't him in the bed. Don't you lie to me. Think about it first before you answer. Grandmaster, we'd better leave here soon. Maybe the dog... I don't care about that darn dog. I need more time. Think about what you're going to say? Yes. Well then, speak. I built a dummy that looked just like him. I put it in the bed knowing that the Fakir would try to poison him with his darts. That's how he saved him. He's cunning as a serpent. Well then, one last question before I put an end to your sanity. trying to kill us. I am not afraid of the living, and even less of the dead. Do you escape death over and over? Good people are lucky. Oh, I cannot take this guy anymore. I'm out of here. Fakir, finish him. You're the best coconut and stone thrower I've ever met. But what about the prince? <laughs> All is not lost yet. Snowy, you keep an eye on the Fakir. I'll rescue the prince. But someday, he will be a snake. I was just a boy too, when I made my whole family go bankrupt. But I did have a choice. I could have been a sponge fisherman like my father, that pathetic loser. 
But I would never have left Greece. I would have been a nobody my whole life, dropped on Leros, that hellhole of an island. Men like me don't trip over pebbles. But what would you know? You're a spoiled little brat who always had everything. Just like the prince and that whole family of worthless bums! Ha! Only if he makes it out alive! Don't you dare ask me for mercy! Because of you, my organization is a mess. My drugs confiscated. My people and I won't go down on them. Rip. Oh, thunder! That was close. Accept something like that. All I hear are empty words. Save your breath. <laughs> no, It's over. You've nowhere to run. Ashed. Leave the prince on the ground. No. 
All right. All right. Slowly. Once we got back to the palace, I witnessed one of the most moving scenes of my life. Oh, my son. I was so scared. After that, the rest was celebration. The Maharaja even invited me to be a part of the parade on his elephant. Tintin, when you arrived in Gaipajam, unrest and fear then. But now, thanks to you, opium has disappeared from our fields. We are back to growing rice. And we can now feed our people again. I'll never thank you enough. The prince's safety is payment enough for huh? Prostrate yourselves before Ramses the Second. Don't be silly. They are here for me. Napoleon's the first. Maybe there's something you can do for me, Your Highness. Just this once I got my car, but for the next time, have my noble horse marrying already? If it's true that you're taking me back to Egypt, take me however you wish. I don't care. Thanks to the Maharaja, we were able to send Professor Anslotsky to the mental hospital while we searched for a cure for them. With all the loose ends tied, I thought it would be time to leave, but it wasn't. The Maharaja invited me to stay in the palace as his guest for as long as I wished. Thanks to this, the prince found a good friend to play with. I have had a wonderful stay at the Gai Pajama Palace, but now it is time to leave. I must go to Shanghai and finish the mission that was entrusted to me. Once I'm there, I'll write to you again. Yours sincerely, Tintin, reporter. Let's go, Snowy. <laughs> <laughs>